Reese Davis, thanks very much, and welcome to a sold-out Heinz Field, and welcome to the ACC on ESPN. It is indeed a rivalry renewed. The 97th all-time meeting between the only two Power Five schools in the state of Pennsylvania. It's time to renew the rivalry between Pitt and Penn State. Hi again, everyone. Bob Wachus and alongside Brock Ewer. Plenty of time to talk about the significance of this rivalry. But what might be more significant than any storyline in this game is the miraculous return of a certain running back, James Conner, that it, it's just amazing he's on the football field today. Yeah, and last week was a little bit difficult for everybody. Coaches love control. Players love routine. And last week, I'll throw it all out the window, is you're just trying to figure out what this kid can do. Heroic off the field. But on the field, he told us he was embarrassed. He's got to be better than he was. 17 carries, just 53 yards, won't get them a W today. I expect the rest to be off and to see a very different James Connors this afternoon. Both of these coaches approached this renewed rivalry differently this week. James Conner, of course, will be out there playing for Pat Narduzzi, but James Franklin did the best that he could to downplay the rivalry, whereas Coach Narduzzi, he shut things down and shut the media out from his practices all week. A message sent to his players? I think so. Just a hyper-focus. I don't particularly like it because I think it makes this game bigger than all the rest that follow. Puts a little more pressure, in fact, on you. But it's what he was used to at Michigan State. And James Franklin telling us, if you got to talk about a rivalry and convince yourself, well, it's not. Penn State won the toss, opted to start with the football. And they will start at their own 25-yard line as Chris Blewett puts it through the back of the end zone. Saquon Barkley was back to receive the opening kickoff. And now the second team all Big Ten running back will be out there as you would think the workhorse for an offense that looks different than what we have seen in years past from Penn State. You've got a dual threat option now with a quarterback that had 14 carries a week ago. Saquon those 22. And that was it. They had 36 of 37 total carries for the Nittany Lions. Very different than what they have been the last three years with Christian Hackenberg who hadn't missed a snap. They've got to get the run game going to set up everything else to settle down the rush to hit the play action pass and to play to the strengths of their personnel. Barkley had 105 yards last week the sixth career 100 yard rushing game but they're going to go to the air first and underneath intended for Mike Kosicki it is knocked away so Mike Caprera the money linebacker a pass defense to start Trace McSorley won the job in the final week of preseason camp 55 and 5 as a high school starting quarterback so he brings moxie to this position that James Franklin likes in toughness and a running ability. Play action swinging it wide to Deshaun Hamilton who has a step and a first down brought down by Terrish Webb but not before he picked up 11 find easy completions early I, I know this is Tracy's second start he got one under his belt but it doesn't matter how much experience or inexperience you have you like those easy completions and seeing the chains move in that first quarter play action again wide open Deshaun Hamilton breaks a tackle Penn State in business on their opening drive and credit Joe Moorhead new offensive coordinator left to head coaching job at Fordham he knew that Pat Martin Narduzzi in all of his days in Michigan State in the pit are going to stop the run at all costs early I love this pass and pass happy offense from Penn State and now a false start will back Penn State up five Crowd noise will be a factor. You can make an argument for both teams. Number 52, five yard penalty, first down. It seems like this crowd literally is the rivalry game 50 50 that we anticipated it would be. So when both offenses are out there, they might have some crowd noise to deal with. They will. And for Joe Moorhead, he knows that the best way to take this crowd out when he's on offense is to get that tempo going. Not only more run out of the quarterback, but lots more tempo for the Nittany Lions. Now it's Saquon Barkley. And he gets back about the five that they lost on the penalty. Tyreek Jarrett on the stop. We expect to be calling number six's name and number a lot on that defensive line for Pitt. He is some kind of force in the middle at that three technique tackle. That's a big man. That's a small number. <laughs> McSorley on second down and long. Hamilton's been busy. 
It'll be third down and nine for Penn State after we check in with Allison Williams. Well, we've seen a bit of running back Saquon Barkley on this first drive, but he's been challenged by his head coach, James Franklin, to show how, how multi-talented he is. He said last week he just wanted to finish with that top end speed. He was dancing too much. This week he needs to lower that shoulder, play through contact. Well, now some early contact. And we'll see which way this call goes. Pitt jumped, claiming they were drawn off. In Penn State, this conversation, Penn State will check a lot of plays, especially on third down. While they're up tempo, Bob, they want to get to the right call, especially on third down. The lineman stood up to get the check. All side. Defense, number 52. Five yard penalty, third down. And this is what I call a twitchy defensive line for Pat Narduzzi. Juan Price, ACC's best with 11 and a half sacks. Rory Blair, they're going to go on some first movement at times. And I'll tell you, that's, that is a gray area. You can convince me very easily that's a flinch from Brian Gaia. That's also a captain in the red shirt senior with a savvy move to gain five. Now a fumbled shotgun snap. McSorley swings it to the sideline, and it's incomplete. And you could see lots of communication. You know, that's one thing James Franklin felt good about last week was their operation. They didn't score enough touchdowns, but he felt like the mechanics of the system and all the communication that goes in with a young quarterback and a new system, they were on the same page. Not so there is Gaia, and you can hear Franklin. I think he's arguing that Pitt played a little, little trick themselves and made a call there to force that early snap right through the hands of McSorley. True freshman Blake Gilligan will try and pin Pitt deep, and he will do just that. Can you execute it any better? At the one yard line for the Panthers to start. This is well coached. Those gunners got to get down and make sure they get their feet out of the white to secure that touchback. Well done by Penn State special teams crew. So now arguably the best story you'll hear this year in college football. Second game back for James Conner. He missed all of last season basically after he tore his MCL and his right knee in the opening game against Youngstown State. And his mom, you might have seen the game day feature, as a quarterback sneak by Nathan Peterman just to get a little breathing room for Pitt called it arguably the best blessing in disguise you will ever hear about with a season ending knee injury because that led through testing and through his face swelling up and having all kinds of difficulties for a chest x-ray to be done which revealed a large tumor next to his heart that was diagnosed as Hodgkin's lymphoma. So he's not only back from an MCL tear in his knee, but he's back from a six-month chemotherapy bout. And here he is up the middle. Running tacklers over. James Conner out to the 27-yard line. Welcome back to big-time college football, number 24. Can't do it better than that. Not a 20 yard play a week ago for Pitt their entire afternoon against Villanova. The toss to Connor. And this time he is brought down at the line. Allison has more. Yeah, that's exactly what James Connor is looking to do today. He was really disappointed with his performance last week. He said it was embarrassing rushing for 53 yards, although he did have a pair of touchdowns. He said it just wasn't me out there. And while he didn't okay, want to admit that down. he was rusty, he did say he knew it would take some adjusting to get used to game speed after not seeing action for a year. But today, guys, he wants to show everybody that last week was his return. Today, he's back. Well, he picked up 24 on his first carry of the day. Now up to 26 yards rushing, second down and 10. And a little counter end around to Quadri Olison with a flag down. Holding, offense, number 35, Bob, 10 yard penalty, second down. For an offense that had a hard time finding explosive plays a week ago, that's George Aston, the redshirt sophomore, missed last week. Thus, he saw lots of different packages. He even saw Connor Dentino, the big center, playing fullback. Probably not going to be the case today. Also worth noting, Penn State is without their hammer inside. 
Jason Kaminda, their middle linebacker, is out with a hand injury for this game. That initial run went right at the middle linebacker. Keep an eye on the adjustments Penn State makes. That moves Naeem Wartman White back inside where he began last season before he was hurt on opening day. Quadri Henderson with a step. Quadri Henderson across the 50. John Reed saved the touchdown. And I love the tempo. Pitt once again coming right up to the line of scrimmage here after their big plays. But that speed on some vulnerability on the edge for Penn State. Yesterday, the Pitt staff telling us Penn State's big, big at the ends. But they think their quickness could get outside, and it did. They're looking for quickness again. Again, it's Quadri Henderson. And he's close to another first down. That's a gain of nine, but these jet sweeps, which we didn't see much last week from Pitt, and obviously with Pitt playing last week against Villanova, with Penn State playing last week against Kent State, you wonder how vanilla both teams' game plan was. Sure. Were. They kept some stuff in the vault. There for was this some. Week. Sure, there was some. Pitt felt like they could just lay on Villanova and run it right down their throat, so you didn't see a lot of these wrinkles. And against a Penn State, they really feel like with two new defensive ends, and Evan Schwan in particular, they feel like they can get outside and outflank him. A lane again for Connor. Still on his feet. Down the sideline to the 11. Two years ago, the ACC Player of the Year. Last season out with the torn MCL and then about with cancer. Now he's got his team set up with a little shovel pass. Nathan Peterman, it's Orndon. He's inside the five, down to about the two yard line. Creative, making the eyes of these Penn State defenders never ever comfortable. Run the big hammer between the tackles. Run end arounds to stress and pressure the outside backers and the force and the containment. And then when you get into the red zone, you've got that package you've worked on. And a little shovel pass wrinkled to the tight end. Matt Canada, a brilliant first drive as offensive coordinator here for Pitt. First and goal for Pitt. Connor scored twice last week. He gets the call here. Stood up at about the one. It will be second down and goal as Parker Cawthron and Naeem Wartman White finally did what Penn State hasn't been able to do on this drive so far, and that stopped James Conner. Yeah, a week ago, Penn State, seven sacks, best in America. A week ago, there wasn't much conversation about all the NFL defensive linemen you lost in Zettel and Austin Johnson, especially inside all that beef. There's a lot of new faces in Pitt and that offensive line in particular. The guards and centers right now on this drive really getting after and dominating the front of Penn State. Counter to the fullback. Into the end zone for a touchdown. George Aston scores as Connor was the decoy. And Pitt's got the lead. A 10 play touchdown drive 98 yards rushing on the first drive for the Pitt Panthers and they've got the lead. The kid that said he was embarrassed by the game film a week ago is going to love watching that stuff tomorrow. James Conner will be playing on Sundays before too long and week one NFL Sunday is with us on ESPN 
at 10 a.m. tomorrow NFL Insiders Sunday edition with all the injury news fantasy updates and the early breaking stories then at 11 the new Sunday NFL countdown crew of course Chris Berman is there but he's joined now by Trent Dilfer Charles Woodson Matt Hasselback Randy Moss they'll take you right up to kickoff it's all streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN as well Nick Scott for Penn State at the four. Brought down at about the 18. One of the great bar stool debates in this town might be who's the best player to ever play for Pitt in college. My vote might be with Allison Williams. Yeah, your vote and probably quite a few others here with Tony Dorsett, former Pitt running back, here with about 70 of his former teammates from that 76 national championship team. As you see these two historic rivals back out on the gridiron, what memories come back for you? Well, for one thing, let me just say this. It's wonderful to see that this rivalry is back. I think it's great for college football. You know, you got two two real historic programs are going against each other each every year. I think that's a good thing. But but let me tell you something. You know, it took us a it took us four years to beat Penn State. You know, I know I know uh, uh, my junior year we I, I just I, I had enough with a bad taste. We we go we're on the one yard line and we don't get in and you know we, we get in we miss the extra point. But the, but the thing is is this you know it's, it's always good to come back to a Pitt Penn State football game. Tony, thank you so much. Check in real quick on the play. Well, it looks like Pitt's going to have a chance to get in once again as Juan Price just stripped it away from Chase McSorley. And Mike Caprera comes up with the Pitt fumble recovery. One of the challenges with Juan Price is all that play action pass, that window dressing in front to slow people down, will not slow him down. He's got a one track mind, and that's to get to the quarterback. And he's got immense freedom in this system to do that. 11 and a half a year ago, one and a half last week. And that is enormous. And for a young quarterback, you have got to feel that pressure. And when you're backed into your own end zone, do the best you can to first and foremost secure the football. The replay booth is going to take one more look to see if you can make any argument, which you cannot, that Trace McSorley's arm was coming forward. His arm is still going back when that ball comes out. It looked like the helmet on the rush of Price hit the elbow of McSorley right there. You won't see shorter football pants than Juan Prices, and you won't see many 5'11", 255 pounders that can get around the edge in college football quite the way that he can. He's a perfect college football guy. He's very difficult to project at the next level. And the further review, the ruin on the field is confirmed. First down, Pittsburgh. And that's about as strong a confirmation as you're going to get. And that's a no no for McSorley. Man gets beat, his left tackle, and he's got to do his best to feel that contact and secure the ball. It's Quadri Olison as the lone setback. He takes the handoff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Inside the seven. Allison, I have to think number 33 probably liked what he just saw. Yes, he did, and I'll let him get back to the game in just a bit. But I want your impressions of James Conner real quick. I have nothing but, but admiration for this young man, especially what, he, what he's had to go through personally with his health. To see him be able to still maintain uh, his, his, his skill level that, that, it, that it's at, I mean, it's, it, it just speaks volumes from, uh, for for him as, as a human being and, and as a person as a, and, and his dedication to not only his his life and his health but to the University of Pittsburgh. Tony thank you so much. And Connor's now back out there. Wide open at the goal line walking in is Quadri Henderson and it's a two touchdown lead for Pitt. scripted any better I mean, I've loved every single play every one of them has had a purpose in the design that's a perfectly executed run route over Warrior the corner cannot get over the top and there is no way no way that Pat Narduzzi could have scripted a better start to the first 10 minutes of this game than what you're seeing here and on the other side for James Franklin an absolute mess for the Nittany Lions to try to dig out of Pittsburgh has owned both lines of scrimmage so far, and they own a 14 point lead. ESPN College Football. 
Brought to you by Allstate, proud supporters of college football. It's good to be in good hands. And Chevrolet, the most awarded car company two years in a row. The state of Pennsylvania has been known to produce a quarterback or two. Blanda, Unitas, Namath, Montana, Kelly, Marino, just to name a few. Okay, Another reason why this game should be played every year between these two schools. Yep. And the fact that this rivalry right now is only in the first of a four year contract with once those four years run out no future in sight to get Penn State and Pitt back on the field against one another rivalry games are great for college football and it's such a shame that this one won't continue after the next four years but boy they need to get that contract renewed as soon as possible Miles Sanders true freshman from the end zone brings it out Barely across the 15 yard line, our first opportunity to head back to Adnan Verk. All right, Bob, thank you. It is the Taco Bell Studio Update and Nick Chubb. Five plays and a touchdown. Ninth straight game with a home rushing score. Six yard touchdown. You know, last week he had 222 yards and two scores. Georgia up early against Nichols, 7 0. Bob, Brock, back to you guys. All right, Adnan, thanks very much. I mean, Brock, you played at UW. You played in the rivalry game. Could you ever imagine Washington State and Washington not no. playing football at the end of a season? No. And all the evidence you really need is a stadium today. It's one of the most electric environments we've been in. Everyone will tell you that the students have not shown up like this for any game that they can remember anytime soon. And Penn State bounce back. Well, Deshaun Hamilton has been their offense so far. He got them across the 50 on the opening drive. He makes another catch to pick up eight on first down here. And Pitt is willing to give that up. They're willing to give up four and five yard little flats and out routes if you can be patient enough to take the crumbs that eventually lead to a cookie, as Tom Moore used to tell me. Saquon Barkley. That's good for a first down. This will really test the patience of Joe Moorhead. First time offensive coordinator. You're looking up at the board. It's 14 nothing. Your defense is getting run over and run through, but you can't get away from your greatest strength, which is Saquon Barkley. He is every bit as gifted as James Conner. He's more explosive, in fact. And at a time when you know, there's utter chaos in the building, you have got to get your best player involved. Read option. Trace McSorley did well just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Jordan Whitehead, who's probably the impact player on this pit defense, came up to help make the stop. Or how about your 350 pound nose tackle right there? Doesn't make the play, but is in the backfield. And Trace McSorley saying, I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> not in high school in Virginia, not last week against Kent State. It was an enormous grizzly bear in the middle. Tight end screen, well designed. Gasicki hurdles a man. And that's a Penn State first down and a big play. You just look at the commitment of these linebackers in safeties to the run. They are so nosy. But that is what Pat Narduzzi wants. He will sacrifice a little bit of these play passes, a little bit of the check downs. So his guys, especially at that second and third level, play aggressive. Deshaun Hamilton had to reach for an inaccurate pass from Trace McSorley. And Gasicki is that X factor, Brock. You talked about how simple at times Penn State's offense is either three by one two by two Gasicki usually is the player that tips their hand and they're trying to get the defense to do what and show them what well they're trying to do what Pitt's doing and that's changed their eyes is to get those eyes inside and allow that big body to outflank you and his greatest strength is his speed he's not a blocker he's growing as a physical guy but once he gets out on the edge and he catches that flat guess what he can turn to 10 15 or 20 yards. McSorley swings it wide to Brandon Polk and he breaks a tackle to get right to the 50 yard strike Bam Bradley tripped him up but that's a gain of three in that first down incompletion it's wonderful to be patient but you have got to execute because if you hit that little flat route on first down you stay ahead of schedule and instead well, you miss it now more difficult third and six four yards on that swing pass to Polk sets up a big third down for Penn State. Incomplete. 
into traffic intended for Barkley. And again, Juan Price, who had the strip sack that got the second touchdown on the board for Pitt, was in the backfield to pressure McSorley. Yeah, and the Penn State fan is saying, uh-oh. I remember this. I remember 80 sacks of Christian Hackenberg and not being able to block out on the edge. Price already sacked fumble. That time a QB hurry forces the incompletion. And a week ago, so much good seven-man protection, so much more solid up front, but getting tested by one of the better ones in all the country. And right now, Price, he's dictating the game with that rush. Juan Price missed 2012 with a torn pectoral muscle, six games with a back injury in 2013 and 2014, tore his other pectoral muscle, finally healthy last season, <laughs> and has now become an impact player. What a start for Pitt. They've got the football back and a two-touchdown lead. We return with our AT&T Inside Access. The recovery of James Conner through the eyes of Rob Blank, Pittsburgh's head football trainer. I think probably one of the things that I learned the most from this experience, going through this experience with James, was how important attitude is to the healing process. Um, he never once uh, felt sorry for himself. He never once wondered why this is happening to him. He just said, hey, this is what it is, and I have to deal with it, and I'm going to push through it. Well, Pat Narduzzi told us that the day after the diagnosis, James Conner sat in his office and said, Coach, I am going to beat this, and they are going to tell my story. Mm. And that's exactly what he's done. If you want a testimony, it often starts with a test. And he passed one that few ever have in college football. Olison bounces it outside and gets dragged down for a loss by Manny Bowen, who got the start today as he slides up to join Brandon Bell and Naeem Wharton and White as the starting linebackers with Jason Kabinda out with the broken hand. Well, in the first time in two series, Penn State actually wins up front. I I'm going to guess there was a tongue lashing on the sideline. The first two opening series out of your defensive line and your front as you see Kabinda with the injury was embarrassing. I mean, Pitt ran right out, right at them, could not get off blocks, totally dictated the tempo at the line. Penn State finally wins one on first down. Play action for Nathan Peterman. He's got room to run. Gets a block. Wharton and White bumps him out. Third down and five coming up after we check in with Allison. Well, I think a lot of the struggles on defense were the confusion, was from the confusion that they had with hits, movements, and shifts uh, pre-snap. Their defensive coordinator, Brent Pry, told them, don't let what they're doing take us out of our defense. Set your feet, trust your keys, and play fundamental deep. Also, Brock, you may see some more zone on this drive to help them out. You know, Allison, I agree with some of that. From your edge players, your ends were caught looking. You can't be hesitant. Brent Pry knows that. But your people inside and your linebackers were overwhelmed by Pitt up front. Olison on third down. They tried to go up the middle with a trap. And Penn State wasn't fooled. They stay home and get the stop. And that's a big one for the Penn State defense. Not only do they finally get a stop, but they have a chance to get field position back on their side. That's a have to. I mean, you have to stem just the physical dominance that Pitt was displaying at the line. There's defensive coordinator Brent Pry. No Bob Stoops. He's down in Tennessee coaching tonight. That's the kind of effort you need. You have to win. You have to get on blo off blocks and allow your speedy linebackers, not necessarily your ends, your linebackers, to close and finish. Rushing yards so far here in the first quarter, 109 to 2 in favor of Pitt. John Reed might make a play on special teams. This could get Penn State back in the game. Reed down to the 15-yard line. Amazing how quickly momentum can shift and change, especially in the college game. I know we're in an NFL venue, but this phase of the game can change it, can turn it, can get these Nittany, fan, Nittany Lions fans alive in this building instead of sitting on their hands. That's that's textbook. That's how you do it. That's John Reed, who never slows down in any of those cuts going north and south. Are you taking a shot at the end zone? Sudden change here on first down. Offensive coordinators so often dial one up here. I am protecting the edge of my line and making sure Price is accounted for. There's the shot. And there's the flag. Mike Kosicki had a step. He was dragged down by Avante Maddox. 
And there's your three by one set you referenced earlier, Bob. Three receivers away, creating a one on one, a corner on a six foot six tight end. You like that matchup? Pass interference. Defense, number 14. Automatic, first down. And just simply by alignment, Maddox is on the back of Jasicki, and it's the arm. Once you pull, you can have your arm on the backside, we've learned through the years, but the minute that arm pulls and gets and creates any movement, it's going to create the penalty flag. First and goal at the three. They'll run it with Barkley. They move the pile. And the Penn State offensive line shoves Barkley over the goal line for a Nittany Lion touchdown. Five eleven, two twenty-five on five eleven of Buck ninety. Saquon Barkley says, "I know James Conner's a big power back, and thank you, Mr. Reed, for getting us into the red zone. But I just showed you what squatting four hundred and ninety-five pounds seven times looks like. It looks like a mismatch with a guy thirty pounds less taking that force on." I remember talking to a friend of mine who was a coach that went back and forth between the NFL and college football and he was an offensive coordinator quarterbacks coach and asking him boy you know the NFL last season back in college this year what's the biggest difference he said don't talk to me go to the special teams coach and mm. talk to him that's the difference Huge. if you're in the NFL you've got a nuclear leg punter everybody's got a field goal kicker that's 85 percent inside of 45 yards in college football you're just happy when the ball clears the line of scrimmage on special teams. How often do games turn on big special teams plays? Well, Penn State just turned the game around on special teams. Celebrating its 12th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds. For each field goal, an extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds and contributing in a big way. 29 and 26 for Penn State as the special teams punt return by John Reed sets up Saquon Barkley for the touchdown. Bob Schusen here with Brock Ewart, Allison Williams in a building here at Heinz Field. Brock, where now momentum has shifted. Joey Julius with a knuckleball kick. That ends up at about the 23 yard line. And squeezing forward is Jamar Parrish as we check in with Adnet. All right, Bob, thank you. The Smart Move Studio update brought to you by Holiday Inn Express. Rutgers favored by 43 over Howard, but they were down 14 0. Here comes Janarian Grant. Fifth career kickoff return for a touchdown, most among active Big Ten players. He goes 84 yards to the house as the Scarlet Knights down by seven. Bob? Well, the Scarlet Knights need a bounce back because they did not fare well last week as they went to your old stomping grounds up in Seattle. And there's a perfect illustration of a kickoff return touchdown of what you said. Coaches complain about 20 hours. Special teams coaches at the next level have more hours than they know what to do with, not nearly enough at this level. Play action, the fake to James Conner. Well protected is Peterman. And wide open at midfield is Quadri Henderson. 24 yards and a flag thrown in the offensive backfield. And it may have been after the play was over. There are fouls. On both teams, and to the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Penn State number 41. Offense, Pittsburgh number 69. That's their first of the game for both players. And that's Adam Biznavati. That might get you a gold statue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really hope the eye in the sky watching video is off the play after that because tomorrow that's you can get made fun of an awful lot in that offensive line room for that fake job. Parker Cothran apparently has the strength of Zeus. Turning the corner is George Aston. He's got a touchdown on already. 
And the fullback, not something we saw last week on tape when we watched this pit offense. Yeah, quite a different story from a week ago. They couldn't get anything going. Now, Villanova had 14 guys in the box on nearly every single play. <laughs> a little different picture, but they're moving people up front. Connor this time is met by Marcus Allen. It's a gain of two. That's How many different momentum swings have we had in the first 13 minutes? Welcome to rivalry games. Not only is it financially beneficial, not only do the fans and the guys that have played in it, like Tony Dorsett, want it. This is what you get. You get tremendous emotion. You know, unlike a lot of other matchups, especially oftentimes in the month of September, save last week, opening day as good as it ever gets. Sign me up for rivalries as often as you can. Wide open again is Quadri Henderson. And he's got another first down as Nathan Peterman held on to that football as long as he possibly could before taking a shot and finding Henderson for 16 more. Well, Pat Narduzzi was complaining, not complaining, he was pointing out the run pass options that you're hearing so much about in Penn State's use of those and getting linemen at times down the field. That was a shovel pass, outside pass option. That was an inside. If he had that shovel pass, which we saw him hit earlier, he had the opportunity, but Peterman shows you the poise of a redshirt senior. That's taken away. Gets his eyes to the outlet, out in the flat, and once again moves the sticks. Another jet sweep. This time it's Dantes Ford. That has been very effective just about every time that Pitt has run that play. Why? Whether to the left or right here in the first quarter. Why? Because those ends. Because when you've got a hammer inside and you've got a, a, a tremendous offensive line. This pit group is going to be one of the better offensive lines in college football this season. Seniors across the board, guys that will play in the NFL. It puts so much of the focal point of those edge players into the inside and the safeties as well. And that half step advantage is all you need when you have the quickness and speed of Henderson. This time it's James Conner. He's inside the 10-yard line again. First and goal for Pitt when we start the second quarter. Textbook, inside, outside, like a great pitcher that mixes his speeds and moves the strike zone up and down, inside and out. That's exactly what Pitt is doing offensively. And James Conner, he knew he would be better today. He knocked the rust off a week ago, and he's back to that ACC Player of the Year form we all got to watch in 2014. Welcome back. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. And we are going to take you back to the days where this was not only a rivalry game, but one of the rivalry games in college football between Pitt and Penn State, back when these teams were both competing for national championships. And today, honoring the 1976 legendary Pitt team. Speaking of legendary, we got Johnny Majors and Tony Dorsett right in the middle of that reunion. And Jeff Matthews was a member of the 1976 Pitt Panthers. He's also our communicator down on the sideline today, making sure we get back and forth to commercial on time. So he's he was, still in the middle of the rivalry. I think he was bothered when I asked him if he was the kicker. <laughs> James Conner to the five yard line to start off the second quarter for Pitt as they're looking to go back up by two scores. Well, Johnny Majors and Tony Dorsett like this game plan. Lots of run. What 157 yards in that first quarter. Remarkable. I mean, just running right at Penn State, but mixing it. I mean, mixing the inside run with the power and the in the inside ISO and getting the fly sweep and getting your fullbacks involved. The number of different guys touching the football. It's got Penn State on their heels. Well, that game tape, you said James Conner was embarrassed to watch from last week against Villanova, already with more rushing yards against Penn State today. And he's the motion man. Second down and goal. Peterman on a rollout. Running out of real estate. Keeps the play alive down to about the two-yard line. Kevin Gibbons is shaken up on the play. 
Uh, Kevin Gibbons a red shirt freshman that was in the backfield all day last week in the Kent State win for Penn State. When we were watching tape yesterday Brock he was the player that you probably focused yeah. on more than any other that didn't get credit for the role he played on this Penn State defense that's an important player that's down for the Nittany Lions just two tackles on the stat sheet did not do any service to the impact that he had. He's one of those guys filling in some very big shoes of Austin Johnson last year and Anthony Zettel guys that are in the NFL right now and he took a massive shot from Manny Bowen. The outside linebacker all the pursuit everybody flowing playing hard to get to the quarterback and sometimes that friendly fire can deliver some of the biggest blows. It is good to see Kevin Gibbons up after taking a hit like this. Oh that is scary. Well, he will be no doubt closely observed over on that Penn State sideline before you're certain that Kevin Gibbons can get back in the game. Again for a defensive line that lost Carl Nassib who won the Hendricks Award and the Lombardi Award last year. Anthony Zettel Austin Johnson all in the NFL. Nassib in the third round of the Browns. Zettel a sixth round draft choice of the Lions. Austin Johnson was a second round draft choice of the Tennessee Titans. So that is a lot of talent to lose on your defensive line and in your front seven and Jason Cabinda hurt today with a broken hand. Now you're leading Kevin Givens off the field. And it's third down and goal. After the injury timeout. Play action. Peterman end zone. Touchdown. Scott Horndog the tight end. I'm guessing somewhere Dan Marino is watching this. And Marino was known for throwing a car wash ball or two. That's a ball you throw through the car wash and it doesn't even get wet. And that ball had to have some RPMs to get through the two defenders. As much as Connor was disappointed in his play last week, so was Nathan Peterman. The fifth year senior was not proud of his performance. He was not proud of how he managed the game. But he couldn't be doing any better here in the second quarter. A nine play 74 yard pit touchdown pass and Nathan Peterman is five for five with a couple of touchdown tosses here in the first half. At Bristol at eight on ABC also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN and that game takes on some added significance. For Tennessee I think Brock in particular they not only want to win tonight they want to impress after what happened to them in their opener. That's exactly right. You got to be a lot sharper. I like to see them play with a little more confidence. A little more play to win instead of I thought at times a playing to lose mentality or not to lose mentality from a week ago. Saquon Barkley from the six. Out to the twenty four. And the most fun I get to have all day. Throwing it back to Adnet. Oh, likewise, Bob was choosing Michigan and UCF over on ABC. This is Wilton Spate to Amara Darbo, 45 yards. Yeah, Michigan's outscored their points 59 to nothing in the first half this season. Bob, that'll put a smile on your face if you're a Wolverines fan. Well, Adnan, I know that you and I have that kind of a relationship that Brock Ewart is jealous of. <laughs> that really hurts my feelings. The most fun. I think this is kind of fun. This is football 101, old school style for Pitt. McSorley on a rollout. He's got plenty of room to take off. And slides out across the 40 yard line as his receivers were well downfield. All those defensive backs had their backs turned and were running to try and cover. There was no one home to track Trace McSorley. Picked up 17 yards. Once again, and it's scooped up. Another 
Penn State turnover. Jordan Whitehead, this time on the recovery, and again, Juan Price was all over Trace McSorley. And the frustration all over James Franklin's face. This is what you get with young quarterbacks. A, a week ago, operated really clean to Trace McSorley. We see Joe Moorhead, offensive coordinator. Now that's two fumbles. And you just can't do it better than this, than Jordan Whitehead. Right to the mesh point, and he knows right where to attack. He's not going in just to tackle Bob. He's going in to force a turnover, to make an impactful play. Pittsburgh charged with a sideline warning. And on top of that, Mike Caprera, their outside linebacker, is just now able to get off the field, shaken up on that last play. But Juan Price already today with a sack. He has forced two fumbles. The first down in the red zone resulted in a pit touchdown. We'll find out what happens at the end of this drive. But how much pressure now on the Penn State defense being put with the short field in a position where their team is in danger of falling behind by three scores. And Jordan Whitehead is out there in the offensive huddle. Over 100 yards rushing a week ago. This edge rush game has been dynamic already. Yet another weapon. And there goes Whitehead in motion. He'll take the handoff. Down the sideline. At the pylon. Out of bounds just inside the three. year's ACC defensive and overall rookie of the year sets his team up first and goal and now we've got an injured Nittany Lion that stops Pittsburgh from going hurry up that's Brandon Bell and that is a significant blow of Cabinda already out Bell arguably their best defender And they get it right. Good call by the Lions judge. Looking right down the line. Ball be at the two-yard line. But Cabinda's out, your middle linebacker, and I think this defense is feeling it, Bob. They're just on their heels. And there was one thing to play at home in front of 100,000 last week in Happy Valley and kind of play off the energy of that fan base. The defense always benefits from it, but I'm looking at defenders all across the board. That time it was Grant Garrett Sickles, defensive end. It's been Evan Schwan. It's been the folks on the edge that are sitting there watching and in, in, in reacting instead of dictating. And Pitt's taking full advantage. Well, if you were to put together a depth chart of the best defensive players last season that Penn State had, you lost Carl Nassib, Anthony Zettel, and Austin Johnson to the NFL, as we said. On top of that, you've lost Kevin Gibbons today as he is back in the locker room. Jason Cabinda with a broken hand, so he was never going to be able to play, and there's Jason Cabinda. And now you've got Brandon Bell, your starting Sam linebacker. That is walking slowly back to the sideline, and it's first and goal for Pitt with a two-touchdown lead. It's going from bad to worse for Penn State. And it's one thing if you're playing a spread team. It's quite another when you're playing a team whose greatest strength takes advantage of those weaknesses. James Conner and some pride shown by the Nittany Lions in the heart of that defense. No gain on first down as Malik Golden came firing up from his strong safety spot to fill the, the hole and make the stop. And I think that's what you're going to have to do. That's what Brent Pry is going to have to do. You can't panic defensively, but your best players left are your defenders on the back end. Marcus Allen, your safety, your leading tackler, second leading tackler a year ago, Malik Golden. You're going to have to get those guys more involved, and if it means play pass over the top, and so be it. You've got to stop the run first. Oh, they can't stop the fullback, but he gets hit at the goal line. George Aston broke the play for a pit touchdown before the ball came out. His second score. And Pitt adds to their lead. on the field is a touchdown. Previous play is under further review. I've never been a believer that teams hold back a playbook or offensive plays, and I think this clearly crosses the threshold of the goal line for Aston. I've never really believed that. 
And if you're going to run it, then run it in games and be successful with it. But we saw none of this. Zero zilch zippo against Villanova. You have had seven different players carry the ball. You can't find more creative edge runs and blocking schemes than what Pitt has thrown at him. Shovel passes, fly sweeps, jet sweeps. Get safeties, my best safety involved to, to get a touch and a carry offensively. Just a clinic for offensive coordinator Matt Canada, and it all begins up front, Bob, with those five that are just pushing around Penn State. And all the looks that you just saw are all of the looks that we have been able to show the replay booth. And it certainly does not seem as if there was any video evidence to overturn the call of touchdown on the field, as you would have to have indisputable evidence that George Aston was hit before he broke the plane. Here's the call. And to further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So it is a three touchdown lead for Pittsburgh. And the Penn State fans, and there are many of them here, and that whole sideline just feels shocked. Flag on the point after. As James Franklin now finds his team in a three touchdown hole with a ton of time left. The try is good. Personal foul. Rough in the kicker. Defense, number one. The 15 yard penalty will be added on to the end of the kick. So it will be a kickoff from midfield for Pittsburgh when we come back. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Hyundai and Pilot Flying J, serving drivers with over 650 locations nationwide. Game day selfies on Pitt's campus. Before the fans came down here at Packed Hines Field for Penn State and Pitt, a rivalry renewed for the first time since 2000. These two schools on the field against one another. Although this is still the most often played game in Penn State history. And they've never faced any opponent more often than they've faced the Pitt Panthers. And back in the day where these two programs were at their height, they were both simultaneously competing for national championships and top 10 rankings. That was when they played the best games between these two schools. And Penn State needs some momentum now. As they're going to have to start at their own 25 yard line. Well, let's check today's Aflac trivia question. All right, we got to thinking with Bristol Motor Speedway hosting Virginia Tech and Tennessee tonight. What's the largest worldwide crowd ever recorded at an enclosed stadium? And that doesn't mean a dome. It just means the stadium completely surrounds the playing surface. Well, our answer coming up. Hard to believe there are too many crowds that will beat what they'll have tonight. Not in college football. And we'll find that answer. Penn State's got to find answers offensively. Saquon Barkley bounces it outside. Does a lot to lose a yard, maybe a yard and a half. So philosophically, here's the conundrum that Pitt's defense puts you in as a play caller. You know that there's easy completions to be had. But in doing so, you're getting away from your greatest strength, which is Saquon Barkley. And playing for Tony Dungy and watching teams just take these little completions against the Tampa 2 and all of that would often get them out of the rhythm of what they do best. Well, there's the Deshaun Hamilton swing pass. He uses the stiff arm. And so far, that has been the one element that has been there for the Penn State offense is getting the ball to Deshaun Hamilton, but never for big chunk plays, nope. always underneath. If you want to take four or five and you've got the patience to do it, you throw it accurately every time. You don't have a false start. You don't have a negative play, then God bless you. You can drive at 12 or 14 plays. But that's often a challenge, especially for a new quarterback in a new system with a new play caller. So you're just counting on the fact that at some point if we keep you underneath you're going to make a mistake. Third down and four. A rollout for McSorley. He's going to try and run for it and he won't get there. 
lost the football as he was going out of bounds, but was brought down at least a yard or two shy of the first down. So the bend but don't break philosophy works again, and it will be a punt for Penn State. The Ravens did it a little bit differently, but the other two that have been the best recently, so Tampa Bay did. It's exactly what they did. They counted on you getting greedy. They counted on you making a mistake, having a holding call. It's what Pete Carroll has done in creating the best defense, the best scoring defense for four consecutive years. They play a cover three. You're going to take that check down and get hit and take that check down and get hit. Are you going to sustain drives time and again and have the patience and the wherewithal to do it? You can. Avante Maddox to return the kick. And he calls for a fair catch. Lost the football. And may have gone, gotten back on top of it. It looks like he did. We'll step aside as Pittsburgh has the football again. They've got a three touchdown lead, but almost a mistake that gave it back to Penn State. We return with the answer. Aflac. To our Aflac trivia question. The largest crowd recorded at an enclosed stadium, Maracana Stadium in Rio, the 1950 World Cup final when Uruguay beat Brazil. Just a shade under 174,000 wow. on hand. There had to be seats in that stadium where you could not see the soccer ball. <laughs> How many Bob Eukers were in the stadium that day? Another end around. Again, it's Quadri Henderson. Again, he's got a first down. Penn State just cannot stop these speed plays to the outside that have been run over and over again in the first half by Pitt. Yeah, and it really doesn't matter. And that time it was Torrance Brown. It's been Garrett Sickles. It's been Evan Schwan. It's been all of their containment and leverage guys. And I can't fault them because their initial reaction is that inside run game and making sure that those gaps are taken care of. But boy. This is this is bad. This is really bad containment on that jet sweep. Now it's Darren Hall right up the gut. Another pit first down. Quickly back to Adnan. Bob, just want to let you know what's happening with Florida State Charleston Southern. Dalvin Cook scored his first touchdown of the season, and then Travis Rudolph also going to work here. Seminoles currently have a comfortable 21 to nothing lead. Bob, back to you. All right, Adnan, thanks very much. Another terrific update from my second favorite colleague. Thank you. <laughs> First and 10 for Pitt at the Penn State 43. Great shot to take a play pass here as well. That time a tackle for loss. Well done by Naeem Wharton and White. And he's looking around and saying, I'm the only one left. Where's my buddy Kabinde inside, the leading tackler from a year ago? Where's Brandon Bell, the fifth year senior that's our most dynamic difference maker? Both of them out. Could been to pregame. Bell trying to find a way to get back on the field. But some young guys, some backups to backups. Out is Kevin Givens, the starting D tackle. And there you see Bell trying to make his way back onto the field. And they need that difference maker in their front seven. Well, right now, Wartman White is the fifth year senior at Mike Linebacker, flanked by a couple of sophomores in Manny Bowen and Jake Cooper. Play action. Peterman rolling to the sideline throws it away exactly what Penn State needs they have forced a third down outside of field goal range and there's still eight and a half minutes to go before halftime but this still feels Brock like a must stop for the Penn State defense with the way that this first half has gone and if you're Nathan Peterman you have got to continue to manage this game beautifully which he does there. There was their play action shot. Instead, a, a late blitzer for Penn State forces him out of the pocket. There's nowhere to go and throw it away. And live to play another day, which you would expect a fifth year senior to be able to manage and handle. That was the first incompletion for Nathan Peterman, the Tennessee transfer. Third down and long, only a four man rush. That ball tipped and intercepted. Exactly what the Nittany Lion defense needed. Malik Golden gets the takeaway. So not only does Penn State get the ball back but they don't sacrifice real estate great field position at their own 35. And was that ever needed and that's off the hands there of Dantes Ford. I like the route and the combination thrown in pretty good rhythm and Dantes has to find a way to make that play. 
Not perfect. It's not on his chest plate. That ball hits your hands. That is the worst thing you can do, and it's exactly what Brent Pry has been preaching. Take takeaways. It's what this defense is going to have to do to get Penn State back in the game. And how vital is this drive for Penn State? It will begin with ball a penalty. Starts. Offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty, first down. And that's a true freshman that rotates in, Connor McGovern. Some veterans up front. Gaia, the captain, fifth-year senior next to him at right guard typically is Dowry, also a fifth-year senior. But that's the future. And the future just set his team back five yards. There's a strike for the first time to Chris Godwin. Godwin has had four or more receptions in 13 of his last 15 games. So that's a player that Penn State would sorely like to get more involved as he picks up 10 yards. And off to Barkley. Short of the first down makes it third down and two midway through the second quarter. to simply sell out to come after Barkley to make sure Penn State can't run the football. Well, on the other side, Pitt has handled people up front, and Penn State here in the most vital situation can't. It's Soto who begins it all. He beats his block, converted defensive end, watch him inside, right on Gaia. That's your fifth-year senior center that's got to win. The worst thing he can do is give up penetration, stops the feet of Barkley. The whole mess point gets discombobulated, much like this Penn State offense has been in this first half. So a three and out after the interception. And a fair catch made by Avante Maddox. Penn State just can't get anything going offensively. With our Napa Auto Parts drive recap, it was the first drive of the game, but it set the tone for this entire first half. It's what you call teaching tape. The big fellas up front getting a body on a body and getting to the second level. Alex office, Officer, Alex Bookster, and then down in the red zone. You can't do it any better than this. Combo block, center guard kick out. Dorian Johnson, once again, 335 pounds of Alex Officer. Beneficiaries on the stat sheet are Connor and Olison and the jet sweeps, but it's the big fellas making it go. Connor wiggling his way across the 20 yard line and thrown back but after a gain of three and a half close to four yards. So what are the adjustments that have to be made for Penn State defensively to stop over and over again hit, able to get to the edge. You're going to have to see these safeties get involved and they can do that and good for them to see Brandon Bell back on the field but you're going to have to see and they've got in their repertoire last week was a blitz fest. Hard to be a blitz fest when you're getting run at the way you are today, but Brent Pry is going to have to bring Golden. He's going to have to bring Allen. He's going to have to get the secondary players involved and force the guys on the perimeter to be in one on ones. You get beat outside in the passing game, you will live with that now. This, the run game's being pounded. Connor has room again. James Connor to the 40. Let's check in with that man, Burke. All right, Bob, major news here. Nickel State dropping the state. So it's just Nichols. Now they're taking on Georgia and Dontrell Taylor here, the four yard touchdown run. So Georgia has the three point lead at the half. Bob, back to you. Well, Adnan Pitt on the verge of extending their lead if their drive continues the way that most have here in the first half. That is the sixth time in the first half that Pitt has had a play of 20 or more yards from scrimmage and mostly on the ground. As Quadri Olison this time gets only two. In a week ago, zero. Villanova held Pitt to zero plays, one of three teams in the Power Five conferences, to not have a play over 20 yards. And what I love today it is the mix, and that's most often the case. It's not just one animal running through you, it is the mix inside, it is the quick jet sweep outside, it is constantly putting this defense on their heels. 
five of those 20 yard plays have been running plays as Pittsburgh has 221 rushing yards so far on the first half. A broken tackle by Quadri Henderson but this time a much better job of anticipation as Naeem Wharton and White eventually got the stop and that's the down and distance that Penn State eventually had to have on this drive as they forced third down and ten. And it was really the play of Sharif Miller the defensive end for the first time an end slowing down that action and allowing the linebackers to clean it up. Peterman a shovel pass. And this time it was sniffed out. Scott Orndorff was cut down shy of the 50 yard line. It will be fourth down and at least four. And Penn State gets the third down stop. And it was your veterans. You asked how or what adjustments you're going to make. Your better players have to rise to the occasion and say, finally, enough's enough. I mean, nearly 250 yards rushed against in the first half. And it's Naeem Wartman White. It's Brandon Bell. It was Marcus Allen staying home that time, not losing sight with his eyes. with. All the window dressing in front of it. Forcing a critical punt. And it was a punt return that created the first points of this game for Penn State. And that 59 yard punt return by John Reed. It's really the only big play that Penn State has made here in the first half. That will roll down to the 17 yard line. Tonight on ESPN, Arkansas, number 15 TCU from Fort Worth. It's college football primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN, the first time that these two old Southwest Conference opponents have met since 1991. Both of them kind of like Tennessee later tonight want to play an awful lot better than they did a week ago. Arkansas squeaking by La Tech, TCU. Giving up more points than Gary Patterson's ever used to to South Dakota State. Both got to be better tonight. Such an important possession before halftime for Penn State. McSorley straight back to throw. Swings one wide. And that's caught by Gasicki. But, Brock, to your point, that's basically what Penn State's offense has been underneath throws that a gain of three. It's kind of like the shift in baseball. You shift it, I'm going to give you this pitch, and you're going to hit it here. And right now I'm dictating defensively. I'm, there's no Godwin. There's very little Barkley, and you're just taking the underneath throws. Another throw underneath, and this one hauled in just shy. It looks like of the first down by Godwin. So eventually you have got to block it up, and you've got to start taking your shots to 12. He's your playmaker. He's your difference maker. Bunch of NFL scouts here today. He's on the list to take a good hard look at the most productive player. One of only three Lions, Nittany Lions, to ever have a 1,000-yard receiving season. You've got to find a way to test Maddox down the field in that one-on-one. -on -one. Third down and one. Hit jumps. Could be a free play. And that will give. Offside. State of first down. Defense. Number 52. Five yard penalty. First down. Soto made the huge play on the previous third and one, getting on the edge of that offensive lineman. The former D end knows he's a little undersized. His strength is his quickness. Try to jump the count instead. Critical first down here for Penn State. McSorley, long throw to the sideline. There's Godwin. Lowers his shoulders and delivers a strike to Ryan Lewis. And that is good for a Penn State first down, a gain of 15 and plenty of time on the clock. And if you're Penn State, you want to manage the clock here. I'm not sure what the hurry is. You've got all three timeouts, under two minutes to go. And Pitt starts the third quarter with the football. So ideally, you would like to score some points but not give their offense a chance to get back on the field. Saquon Barkley. He's got room. Saquon Barkley. Down to the 25 yard line. Just such a difference maker. I mean, if you can just get him out of the phone booth at all and into space, you see the damage he can do. He's one of the country's best in a loaded, loaded tailback field in the 2016 season. Don't forget about Saquon Barkley. 
A gain of 29 there. Barkley again. No gain on first down. Rory Blair came up to make the stop and 92 for Pitt is one of the great stories in this game as well as we have an injury and it looks like trainers coming out on the field just for a moment now they're heading back to the sideline unless Penn State's going to call a timeout here and it looks like they will. We're going to step aside for 30 seconds and come right back to Heinz Field. I'm Adam Avera coming up in the Lexus Halftime Report. Clemson's offense right now struggling against Troy after a poor performance in week one against Auburn. Also, mighty Michigan Wolverines looking great against Central Florida and the pilot flying Jay battle at Bristol. Danny and Joey's thoughts on that. Bob, you're my favorite play-by-play -play guy, but we both know Joe Tess is watching. <laughs> All kinds of love for the Boston College alums. We appreciate that, Adnan. After that tackle by Rory Blair on the Penn State timeout, second down and ten. And it's first and goal for Penn State. Composure on that throw by Trace McSorley. And Gasicki may not be much of a blocker right now, but you see the little out and up move there. Gets Caprera, the senior. That's a matchup advantage. He's a mismatch on corners and strong side linebackers. And good poise there from McSorley to put it on the money. And now a timeout called by Pitt defensively. Another 30 second timeout. So we're back to Heinz Field in a half minute. Pittsburgh spends a timeout on defense, and now Penn State with 106 to go in the first half. Trying to score into the end zone where that guy is. He's going to get a tan today. <laughs> he might kinda, get more than that. Kind of needs it. That is going to be maximum quality control testing of whatever level of SPF, if any, that he put on. Well, this kid's a winner. He's got guts. And even though you're down 28 to 7, you go 55 and 5 in high school, you battled back before. And this has been a tremendous drive, his best drive of the day. This could be the game for Penn State. The importance of them getting the ball into the end zone here, and I'm not even sure, Brock, before halftime if a field goal does them much of anything. This might be four down territory. Avoid the negative play. First and goal inside the two. A jump cut and brought down at the one yard line is Saquon Barkley. Just couldn't get away from Matt Galambos. That's a tremendous tackle that few can make. We saw the jump cut a week ago very similar to that look. Credit the senior Galambos for finishing. Right back to Barkley over the pile. He's into the end zone. That's a Penn State touchdown. You've seen the weight room prowess really on both touchdown runs. That Narduzzi wants him to take another look. Earlier it was plowing through the free safety. And that I, I kind of complimented the 495 pound squat seven times. That jump right there, that's reflective of the power clean record at Penn State. Nearly a 400 pound power clean as you see the explosion from Barkley way up in the air to get it in. And that last look that we showed you, and this one as well, you can see the official is right on the goal line. And as long as the nose of that football along the eye line of the official looking down the goal line breaks the plane, it's a touchdown. And it looked as if that last reach by Barkley got the job done. This is that look we showed you a moment ago. And you can see the official on the far side looking right down the goal line. And that looks like a football over the goal line. To make sure, but it looks certain to be a Penn State touchdown. And what a huge drive after your defense gets their back up and gets that third down stop to go down the field and score a touchdown. Now barring in these last 42 seconds, Pitt coming back and scoring again. Do you ever think we'd be going into the no. locker room at halftime with Penn State saying they've actually got a little momentum? No, and I didn't think we'd be talking about 28 points in the first half either. I, I thought if you could get to 28 in this matchup, you'd find a way to win. And to further review, the ruin on the field stands. Touchdown.
a good look at Matt Lime Grover, new old line coach, a little pat on the backside of Barclay. And these teams are still learning about one another. Maybe not Pitt so much. They play seven seniors defensively, a lot of seniors on their offensive line, fifth year senior quarterback. Penn State's still learning about a lot of young, inexperienced players in some new spots, and they learned on that drive. Their young quarterback, he's got some guts. Now, Penn State has turned it over a couple of times. They have not had those big plays offensively before that last drive, so now maybe some momentum, at least where that's concerned. But 219 rushing yards for Pitt in the first half. What gets said in the locker room, and how is it adjusted to make sure that that's reversed. Penn State can't give up those kind no. of yards in the second half and come back. No, and it's got to be your veterans as it was on that last possession. It's got to be Brandon Bell that wins. Naeem Wartman White's got to win. Marcus Allen from the back end. And you've got to do really what Pitt has done defensively, and that's commit to stopping the run. Even if it means more resources and assets at a time you're comfortable with, make them beat you with their weakness. And that's they're going to be their passing game and their perimeter people outside. Yeah, I guess if I'm a Penn State fan, I'm wondering strategically, why our defense hasn't done what's necessary to take away James Conner the way that the opposition's defense has done what's necessary to take away yeah, Saquon Barkley. Yeah, I think there's two things. I think number one, it's just built into, or coordinators like to say it's baked into, it's baked into the very fabric of what Pitt does defensively. And then secondly, it's your inexperienced people up front, Bob. I mean, it's your defensive line. You're not creating the plays that Rory Blair is and Juan Price is and the big fella Jared is in the middle. You guys in that front four got to step up. This will come out to the 25 yard line. And tonight after Virginia Oregon finish up it is Sports Center at night with Bucci and John Anderson. They'll have all the highlights from US Open women's final Major League Baseball. Obviously a big day in college football the third round of the BMW championship at Crooked Stick NFL kicking off with the first big Sunday tomorrow. It's Sports Center at night on ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN. Audrey Olison to about the 32 yard line. And you wonder if Pittsburgh even runs another play. Or if they're content to just take a two touchdown lead to the locker room at halftime. I would think Pat Narduzzi if you told him up by two scores at the break. He'd probably be fine with that and nearly 250 rushing yards. I think so. 226 first half rushing yards for Pittsburgh to be exact. And the Panthers have a two touchdown lead at the break. 28 14 pit on top of Penn State in this rivalry renewed in just a moment back to Adnan Burke the Lexus halftime report. Welcome back to Pittsburgh and welcome back to the ACC on ESPN inside Heinz Field the Penn State fans shell shocked for the better part of the first half but they scored a touchdown right before halftime. We've got a football game Bob Shoes and Brock Hewitt upstairs Allison Williams down on the field the running game for Pitt probably the biggest factor in the first half but also when you make some impact plays on defense and get some takeaways combined with a run game that's tough to beat. I think you saw the seniors of Pitt come to life and they start seven of them defensively and none better than Juan Price their defensive end and he was playing downhill while I felt like Penn State offensively especially the quarterback Trace Early was trying to find his footing and how about 30 runs out of your 38 plays in the first half pretty remarkable but here was here was Juan Bryce getting it going this was in a pass situation a one on one and the ACC's best from a year ago took no time to get started once again they're in the run game as Trace is just a little hesitant and the veteran Bryce unloads forces the fumble and we talked about James Conner in the open as I bet every game will this year with his story his offseason everything he overcame after a slow start and just 53 yards in the opener. 80 plus in the first half and many of them in the big play variety setting up his buddies around him Quadri Henderson who was dynamic. So James Conner in front of a sellout crowd of course. In the opening game last season against Youngstown State tearing his MCL and developed a bad cough night sweats his face was swelling during his rehab process tests revealed the large tumor right next to his heart that was causing a vein 
to back the blood up that was trying to get to his heart. His face was swelling. And it turned out he had Hodgkin's lymphoma. And as mom put it on that wonderful piece on game day by Tom Rinaldi, it was the biggest blessing in disguise, him tearing his, ace, his MCL that we could have asked for because that triggered the rehab and the tests to find the tumor to then cure him of cancer. And he is now not only cured, but back on the field and performing like an ACC player of the year that he was two years ago. And we've got flags all over the place as the kickoff sailed out of bounds and Joey Julius was hit and three players or three officials saw it happen. Add to the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on Pittsburgh, number 39. That's his first of the game. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal from the 25. First down. That's just dumb. I mean, that's uncalled for, and it's just going to back your team up. And that's a weapon right there. And Julius, seven of eight, were touchbacks a week ago. Pitt. Last two games of that kickoff return touchdowns, you know he was going to unload, and that is a foolish penalty for Pitt to back themselves up. And that's a big spot now for the Penn State defense because you score the touchdown going in at halftime to make it 28-14. Pitt starts the third quarter with the football. Now they start at their own 12 and a half yard line. And they'll start with two tight ends. And that same motion we saw throughout the entirety of the first half. Here's Connor. To about the 20, maybe the 21 yard line as we check in with Allison. And it's those motions and shifts that have been a problem for the Penn State defense. James Franklin told me that it's caused them to have to play more base defense. They can't be creative, but he just told his guys just calm down and get your cleats set. Now, as far as the offensive side of the ball, the issue for them has been with cadence. They were using a clap cadence, but then the defense was clapping, causing his offensive linemen to jump. It made them tentative, really affected them going forward. So they'll use a normal cadence from here on out. That's interesting. Second down and three. Connor again. And it looks like he will be stopped the yard shy of the first down by Antoine White. That is some of the gamesmanship, but when you get run for nearly 250 yards, it's not just the window dress. And you saw it on that first down run. It's once again Dorian Johnson and Alex Officer and Adam Biznavati, the left tackle. That combination's been moving people. Peterman to throw on third down. Dumps it off, and George Aston, who did not have a carry last season, has a couple of touchdowns today with a flag down. Now he makes a catch. He's been an offensive weapon that wasn't even on the two deep for Pitt. Ineligible receiver downfield. Offense, number 69. Five-yard penalty, third down. Well, Brock, this is a point of emphasis for the officials, and there's been kind of a zero-tolerance policy of getting beyond three yards. They catch Biznavati here. Pat Narduzzi talked to these officials on the other side. He felt like with all the run pass options at Penn State, they crossed that line, that, that threshold of about three yards. And in fact, it's his left tackle, his senior. There's nobody that just creates a no-no right there. You've got about a three-yard window as a lineman. You can go downfield. But you're right. Those umpires so focused on it, if it's close, they're going to call it. Third down and six. Another flag as the play clock wound down. Delay of game. Offense, number four. Five yard penalty, third down. Pat Narduzzi wanted his quarterback, Nathan Peterman, to recognize the fact that the play clock was winding down and called timeout. That's already the third penalty on Pitt in the first 90 seconds of the half. And you can sense these Penn State fans realize how big this third down is. Their offense scores a touchdown at the end of the first half. What you want to do is get a three and out here and give the ball right back to your offense where they're probably feeling about as good about themselves as they have at any point today. It's a big get. This is a big play. And the Penn State defense stands up and gets the job done. Torrance Brown comes through and drops Olison, And this could give the Nittany Lions excellent field position. That's a win on the defensive line. That, that's something you did not see much in the first half, and I like the pressure. You saw the nickelback read coming off the edge. It is what you're going to have to do, and there are adjustments that you can make. Defensive coordinator Brent Pry has been at this a while, and when you get run on for over 200 yards and most of it between the tackles plus the jet sweep, you are going to attack, and you're going to find unique pressures like that one to stop them. 
in traffic making the catch trying to get a return started was John Reed couldn't do it. Well what has to change in the second half for Penn State offensively to get something going. I talked about Pitt and just how they are dictating the game. Look at the commitment of all of these guys and look at the space to the field. This is what Pat Narduzzi wants. He wants to stop the run at all costs. And if you're willing, if you're willing to take this, and obviously the corner's got to tackle and you've got to be sound in that way, but if you're willing to take some of those edge yards time and time and time again, they're there. Because Narduzzi's plan will not change. His defense will stop the run first. Play action, and there it is. Deshaun Hamilton picking up about five on the surface. I would look at it as the amateur. I didn't play quarterback and say, well, what offense wouldn't want to over and over again have wide open pitches and catches in the flat for three, four, five, six yards? What would be bad about that? Does it take you away from your greatest strength, which is Saquon Barkley? That's the offset to it. Second down and four. Barkley is the target down the sideline. A little wheel route, and he is gone. That's a Penn State touchdown. <laughs> Rewind the clock to the last three minutes of the first half, and now the first three minutes of the second half. This game has changed completely. Terrific job, momentum-wise, taking advantage by Penn State. And a great call there, an adjustment by Joe Moorhead. That's what you're getting paid to do. That's why James Franklin hired him away as a head coach from Fordham to make those adjustments to come right out, take what the defense has given you, and then a perfectly conceived rub out there to get Barkley the ball. We've been wondering, how do you get the ball in the hands of your best weapon in the open field? Trace McSorley just did it. Saquon Barkley takes it to the house, and it's a one-score game. Every Monday morning, we're underway. Welcome back to a steamy day here at Heinz Field in a game that just got a lot more interesting. Pittsburgh now with a seven-point lead over Penn State. At one time, this was a three-touchdown advantage for a pit offense that looked like it couldn't be stopped. But now the Nittany Lion fans have some momentum. And Quadri Henderson watches the kickoff from Joey Julius. Head through the back of the end zone. Why was Saquon Barkley so wide open on the wheel route? Well, lots of man, I mean, lots of zone coverage, which we've documented. And look what Pitt does. They go man to man. You can tell by the face masks. And watch Caprera here. He gets bumped off by Jasicki. He's a man to man coverage on Barkley. And I promise you, if Caprera falls down with that contact, instead of him initiating with the tight end, if he gets bumped and acts and falls down, that's a pick. But because of that aggressive nature, and he's going to get his coverage, he runs through the tight end, thus he initiates, thus no pick play, and a perfectly designed against man-to-man -man coverage scheme to get your best playmaker going. Play action, the rush coming. Long to the sideline and almost intercepted. Nathan Peterman trying to find George Aston again, and Christian Campbell read it almost turned Aston into a defender. And there's your most explosive guy defensively, Manny Bowen. At the linebacker level, not the best yet. He's just a young pup. He's just a true sophomore that's getting thrown into this deal. And I love, once again, the pressure. You're not sitting on your heels. You're dictating defensively. It's been a while since we've seen one of the jet sweeps run by this pit offense. Are you noticing from a Penn State defensive standpoint they're deploying their guys to take that away? Not necessarily. There's a screen. It's Connor. He's got a first down. That's a big time call. And that is a veteran coordinator in Matt Canada on his side feeling what I'm feeling up here. And that is Penn State with a very different disposition in the second half. And if you're going to get aggressive, guess what we're going to do? We're going to screen. We're going to draw. We're going to trap. And in that case, a wonderful time screen to get out in front and get out of their own end zone area. Connor to the 40-yard line, maybe the 41. Naeem Wartman-White 
who also tore a knee ligament. His ACL also on opening day, similar to James Conner, made the stop. We had that game last year when Penn State lost at Lincoln Financial Field to Temple. And Naeem Wharton and White lost an entire season on punt coverage. And boy, are they happy to have him back, especially with the players they lost to the NFL and the injuries they've also suffered in their front seven on defense. Peterman rolls wide open in the flat. Nice cut back by Connor. And it looks like he has the first down. He does without measurement. They'll give him the first down. And for all the success that James had as the rookie of the year or player of the year, excuse me, in 2014, this is the one element that needs to continue to grow. Last week was his first ever touchdown reception. That's hard to fathom with as much ball as he played and all the productivity in the run game. But if he can provide this element, in the screen game, in the check down game, just find more opportunities outside of just between the tackles to get him involved. Nice jump cut in the backfield, and there is his replacement from last season, Quadri Olison. That's pretty good. When James Conner needs a rest, you bring in the ACC Offensive Rookie of the Year from last year, who makes runs like this. And the key there is never lose his speed. 220 plus pounds himself. But oftentimes, big guys, when they go laterally slow down, he doesn't. Olison gained 18, got a first down, now moves the pile for about eight more. Last season, Ohio State ran for 315 yards against this Penn State defense. That was the most given up by Penn State in any game last season. They've given up 262 on the ground so far today and we have most of the second half still to go and it's hot and it's humid and they've been on the field an awful lot and Pittsburgh has thrown eight different guys touching and running the ball at them Connor is gang tackled so it will be third down Tyrell Chavis made the stop it looks like the big right tackle Brian O'Neill is coming off the field. He is favoring his shoulder. The converted tight end. This can be an area of some depth. Jared Jones Smith, more than likely his replacement, a kid that started before he tore his ACL last year. Interesting here. Third down and one. Connor comes out. Darren Hall, at only 5'11, goes in to replace him. And he is the lone setback. Instead, the quarterback sneak. Peterman pushes the pile. And the officials look like they will spot it right on the line to gain. And again, without even bothering to bring the chains out, line judge on the near side says first down. What a big drive. I mean, it's wonderful to hit a well-designed play. I mean, there's part of Joe Moorhead over there calling plays for Penn State that's so excited. Right, as they scheme and plan and hope for man-to-man -man coverage and run the rubber out, it's great. But there's something entirely different about just beating up and wearing down a defense of just lining up and running right at them. It can be incredibly demoralizing and break the will of your opponent. Spinning at the 20 yard line is Darren Hall. Stays in bounds inside the clock. First and goal for Pittsburgh. 21 more. Connor's got the power. Allison's got the jump cut. You got the spin cycle with Hall. Going fast. Once again, it's Darren Hall. At the goal line. Touchdown. Field was a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. And it looks like he may be down just inside the one yard line. Would you say that's a definitive look? I would. And what effort there from Wartman White to chase that play down. 
I, I got to tell you, I've enjoyed this run game as much as any run game I have seen. How come? Because it is just a beautiful mix of zone, of power, of toss sweep, of jet sweep, of fly sweep. It is showing you that you don't have to just run the spread system to be creative in college football. And you could do it with so many different pieces and parts and to have three different running backs, Bob, and to have tight ends and fullbacks involved. I think so often the guys that run the spread system get so much praise for their creativity and look at them spreading the field and doing all this stuff all well how about just some running the ball in incredibly diverse ways to wear down and really challenge a defense. Well the Panthers already have their offense heading back out on the field so it looks like they've been told by the coaches up in their press box to expect that this will be second down and goal inside the one. Jim Cheney left here. He went down to Georgia. Paul Chris left. He's at Wisconsin. But yet, similar style of players, similar scheme. And Matt Canada, the new offensive coordinator, came in and told us yesterday it is incredibly rare to ever walk into a situation and be overloaded with offensive linemen. And that's what he's got here, plus an incredibly deep backfield. Jerry McGinn is our referee. By the way, it's a Big Ten officiating crew. and. The reason he trotted down the sideline, he's going to a backup headset. Apparently, we have a malfunctioning headset on the sideline, so he couldn't communicate with the replay booth. So now he is getting the word. Seems like he can hear just fine as to what they see up in the replay booth. We're expecting that most likely the ball will be at about the half yard line, second down and goal. But it was ruled a touchdown on the field. And that's pretty definitive to me. You see the green grass, you see the knee down as he is reaching for the goal line. And James Franklin was concerned. He knew when he lost his middle linebacker, Kabinda, his, his tackler, he's his horse in there that kind of sets the table for everybody else, that there would be some challenges, and knew that Pitt, unlike Penn State when he inherited the program, had a plethora of big difference makers on the line of scrimmage. And his concern is 22 minutes to play. That defense been on the field a long, long time, taking a physical beating from this pit run game. And they've given up 289 yards rushing to this point. Looks like they're still having some communication problems between the replay booth and the sideline. Can you just yell down to him, Bob, and let him know that you think clearly? I'm loud. I don't know if I'm that loud. After further review, the runner's knee was down prime to him crossing the goal line. The ball will be placed at the half yard line. Second down. Certainly the right call, but from a pit standpoint, the way that they've run the football might just delay the inevitable. But it has been creative with the fullback. It's not just slamming it up in here. And that to me again is the beauty of their play calling today, the beauty of their scheme. What they did not show against Villanova a week ago getting ready for this Penn State team. Yeah, imagine next week Pitt goes to Oklahoma State in Stillwater. Imagine if you're Mike Gundy's crew and you turn on the Villanova tape and then all of a sudden you turn on this tape as you're scouting getting ready for that game. Talk about the difference. Second down and goal inside the one. It's James Conner now the lone setback. He takes the handoff and he's into the end zone. That's a pit touchdown. There is a flag down in the end zone. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on Pittsburgh, number 78. It's his first of the game. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So Alec Bookser is called for the penalty, and that means that Pitt will be kicking off from their own 20 yard line. So that could affect field position in a game that's still far from over as Pittsburgh now has a two touchdown lead again. But the Penn State offense has looked like a different group. 
since late in the second quarter. And now we have another penalty. This time it's Penn State that jumps off. And it's Christian Campbell. The only foul is offside. Defense, number one. Half the distance to the goal. Retry. Another long scoring drive for Pittsburgh. 11 more plays, 75 more yards. They've had one touchdown drive today, Brock, after a takeaway with the short field. But the rest of the day has been then getting the ball in their own end, if not at one point at their own one yard line. They have a 99 yard touchdown drive in this game, all with the running game. And what will Penn State, especially defensively, have left in the tank on what has become a really hot, humid day? Now the pressure back on the Penn State offense. They need another answer for James Conner's latest touchdown. Go. Play. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. It's a college football tradition. And Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Some great players in the history of this series between Pitt and Penn State. Mike Munchak, our own Mark May. There's Todd Blackledge, who had a huge win against the Dan Marino led Pitt Panthers back in the day. Saw Kurt Warner, Tony Dorsett. It's almost when you come through the Pitt offices and take a look at the names up on the wall and go back and look at the old film of these two teams playing in the late 70s and early 80s. I mean, it is Hall of Famer after Hall of Famer. It's going incredible. up against one another. I don't think most people would guess that Pitt has the fourth most Hall of Famers of any FBS school out there. Fourth most. Incredible. Miles Sanders. Good field position at the least for Penn State. After that penalty, as they will start offensively near midfield. That is the importance of that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty and how it changes field position as we go back to Adnan. Bob, how crazy is this? Troy and Clemson and Ray Ray McLeod shades of Deshaun Jackson, Kalen Clay, Aaron Dobson dropping the ball before he crosses. Clemson in a battle, and that is a bonehead play, Bob. That is the definition of a bonehead play. Pretty big series here for Penn State offensively, who's found touchdowns on their last two drives, positive field position. And what looks like a little man-to-man -man coverage now from Pitt. Now they've got Mark Allen in a tailback. He sneaks out of the backfield and is open and picks up three. Right to midfield. Boy, Jordan Whitehead closes distance so quickly on even the small scat backs coming out of the backfield. And it's always been a part of this kind of defensive system. Through all those years in Michigan State, have been so good on the back end of that defense when you can erase plays in front of you, and that's exactly what Whitehead does. And I like this concept. Your tempo wasn't working, so get to the best play available. Little draw play up the middle. Tyreek Jarrett there for Pitt. A gain of about three more brings up a big third down now for Penn State. And this is where Pitt likes to heat it up. This is where they like to be creative. They'll be base those early downs and mix in those blitzes on third down. Trace McSorley has completed his last nine in a row. And that's exactly what he is looking at. Good move here from Joe Moorhead. Yet another adjustment in the second half to take your time to get your protection and get to the right call. McSorley almost picked. And then on a deflection, it ends up in Godwin's hands. Avante Maddox jumped the route and instead of trying to grab it, tried to knock it away. Tipped it up in the air. Godwin shaken up, but that's the first third down conversion of the day for Penn State. And circle that play. Remember this play is a critical play in this game if Penn State turns it. That could have very easily gone the other way and been looking at 42 to 21. And instead, with the tip and the focus from Godwin, you actually get your, like you said, Bob, your first third down conversion of the game. McSorley steps up, floats one down the seam, and it's incomplete as he had Saquon Barkley 
leaking out of the backfield. Pressure, one-on-one -on -one situation. Maddox sees it right in front of him, and that is just incredible concentration. A nasty shot to the knee there of Godwin as he limps off the field. On a day where Penn State has lost too many of their difference makers, Kevin Givens come into the game with no Cabinda either. Let's keep an eye on Godwin and whether or not he can find a way to get back on the field. Replaced at least for the moment by redshirt freshman Jawan Johnson at the top of your screen. Long throw outside the numbers to Deshaun Hamilton. Barclays basket lead. Close to the 35 yard line in front of Terrish Webb. Take what they give you. Been impressed by Trace. Hostile environment. Just the second start of his career. But the kind of poise that you've heard talked about with him and his background. Another big third down. And another check with me, and this is where the games get going. Just pit check out of their pressure they brought last time. Try to confuse the young signal caller. Saquon Barkley open with blockers in front. Gets to the marker. Down the sideline. A flag down. And it will be a holding penalty called against Penn State. Now what will be interesting will be if Barkley picked up the first down. Holding. Offense. Number 84. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Third down. Did Barkley get the first down before the holding call? And you reference Johnson and he's in there because of Godwin and you love the effort. And oftentimes when your hands are inside and tucked inside you can get away with a little bit of that pulling. I think it's just the last tug right there when you've got to let go. Barkley already had the first down if you just allow Maddox to try to dive for him. Yeah, that holds was well before Barkley got down the sideline. So now it's third down and eight. with a spin and now what do you do he lost the football as he went to the ground they'll say it's a fumble and Pitt's got the recovery was he down that'll be certainly the case they'll make on the Penn State sideline it was ruled a fumble on the field nope. not even close They'll review just to make sure. But no question that ball was out before he was even close to coming down. So it's another Penn State turnover. That's three. Three fumbles today. None of the interceptions, none of the variety where your freshman quarterback, excuse me, your Richard sophomore quarterbacks making mistakes. That's your difference maker, Barkley. And to further review, the ruin on the field is confirmed. Fumble recovered by Pittsburgh. First down. Another big play made by the Pitt defense. And now the pressure is back on the Penn State defense. And a ton of credit there to Dennis Briggs, the nickel safety that comes into the game on these third down situations. And he goes right for the football. You see him jab that right away. You love Barkley's effort, the spin move, all the energy and effort to put yourself in a situation, but in the end, it's the senior Cabrera that chases the, chases the fumble down. Well, you see reactions like that. Awesome. Try convincing us this is not a rivalry game, as that looks like it will be an illegal shift on that play called against Pitt, as they had two players in motion at the snap. Legal shift. Legal shift. Offense. More than one player moving prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. First down. But Brock, you're in this atmosphere. You see the player reactions, the student section, half the building Penn State, half the building Pitt fans. It's quite the a definition of a rivalry game, in spite of the fact that it hasn't been played since 2000. An incredible swing of emotion on both sides. With too many game-changing plays if you're a Penn State fan. Unfortunately, those turnovers have just been critical. Back to James Conner. He's got six as we check in with Allison. 
Pat Narduzzi went over to his offensive line and kind of got after him a little bit after that last touchdown and then penalty. Loves their energy, their effort on that drive, but can't have any more of that extra stuff. So they're playing well, but they got to keep playing smart out there to close this thing out. And remember, you get a second call. Biznavati's already got one. Bookser has one. You mess around again. If you're Penn State, why not? If I'm a Penn State player, I'm getting up into the face of those guys and challenging because one more personal foul and sportsman like they're out of this game. 12th career 100 yard game already for James Conner. A roll for Peterman to the sideline incomplete. Third down and long. It'll be third down and nine. Another chance for Penn State to get a stop on defense. Three man rush on third down and the pocket still collapses. Peterman gets out. And then lose the quarterback. All the way down to the Penn State 34 yard line. Brandon Bell eventually brought him down. I hope Nathan Peterman's okay with the term game manager. Because so often it's a derogatory term. Ah, oh, you can't carry your team. Oh, you're not quite good enough to throw it 30 or 40 times. You're going to run it 75% of the snaps today. Throw it out. You know what a game manager does? He manages the biggest moments. And when you have to deliver on third down and they rush three and everything's covered, you find a way to get it done. Connor up the middle. Five more. I can only imagine the Brent Pride, Tim Banks defensive coordinator mindset. When you dial up a three man rush, you see it do exactly what it's designed to do, which is to get some pressure on the quarterback, and he's out the gate for 30 yards. Quarterback draw this time, and that is diagnosed by Torrance Brown. So it's another third down right on the edge of field goal range. And worth noting here, Chris Blewett, the kicker for Pitt. Huge leg. Three kicks at 50 plus in his career, but he's on watch. He was 0 for 2 a week ago. So this isn't simply a no, let's just run it, play it conservatively, because I feel great about my kicker situation and make it a three score game. And I promise you, Blewett's thinking about that just a little bit. Struggle a week ago, and I bet there's part of him saying, hey, offense, find a way to move these chains right here. Because this is right in that no man's land of nearly a 50 yard field goal. A shovel pass, and that time Orndoff is immediately dropped. Now what do you do? Naeem Wartman White made the stop. And from here you're looking at about a 50 yard field goal. And it looks like Chris Blewett is going to come out and try and make it a three score game with just over a minute to go in the third quarter. It'll be right on 50 yards. Again his career long 56 but he missed both of his attempts last week. And he can kick low. We've seen special teams play a huge role. Better get this kick up because you know Penn State's going to attempt to block it. No chance. Some momentum back to Penn State side as Pat Narduzzi's team comes up empty. Chris Blewett misses for the third time this season. We are back with this week's college football rankings brought to you by Capital One and upsets the story of week one three teams of the top ten and seven ranked teams go down. How about Wisconsin and Texas unranked both into the top eleven. And how about huge huge difference between one week one and week two no ranked opponents going up against one another this weekend. Lots of heavy favorites and the last time we had a weekend like this we did see some upsets so stay tuned and Tennessee's survival against Appalachian State sets up a game where they want to look impressive tonight if they can at Bristol Motor Speedway in our primetime game against Virginia Tech after the missed field goal pretty good field position for Penn State play action for Trace McSorley he gets out of the pocket 
throws it away. It's a little more of what I thought we would see, Bob. I, I did not think we would see Pitt run the ball the way they did. And I certainly did not think we were going to see 42 first half points in this one. And I continue to like this. It's one of the adjustments that you have made. This is within your system. It's not going out of character. This is one of your tempos to do the check with me and get to the right play. Let's coming. Asiki blown up. Out on the edge by Avante Maddox. Forward progress for maybe a yard or two, but it's now third down and long for Penn State. See if the Nittany Lions run this third down play before the end of the quarter. The stadium's electric. Five seconds to go in the quarter. They get the snap off. Blitz coming again. McSorley, long throw, and he's got it. That time the blitz was picked up, and DeAndre Tompkins is able to pick up the first down a huge third down conversion to end the third for Penn State as we head to the fourth quarter in a game that's far from over. There has never been a bigger crowd at a sporting event in the city of Pittsburgh than the nearly 70,000 that we have here at Heinz Field today for the renewal of the rivalry between Pitt and Penn State and we start the fourth quarter and no one has left. Two score lead for the Panthers. The Nittany Lions though with a first down near midfield. Bob Oshusen, Brock Heward, Allison Williams and the rest of our crew and it has been loud and they have been on their feet basically since the jump. And it feels like they're just getting warmed up. I mean this is exactly why these two teams should play every single season. McSorley, counter handoff, Saquon Barkley gets outside, turns the corner. He is powerful and combines that with speed. Close to a first down, it looks like he might have it. Well, and this was the greatest fear in talking to Josh Conklin, defensive coordinator yesterday, was his ability to bounce. Of everything he can do between the tackles, they're pretty familiar with pit running backs that are good between the tackles, but he's got that gift. And it is a gift, it's a feel, it's an instinct. And then the finishing gear is at a 4-3-40 to make them pay when he does bounce outside. Play action. McSorley, he's looking for the end zone. Hold in! What a catch by DeAndre Tompkins at the two-yard line over the top of Ryan Lewis. Well, there's your adjustment. You know, what, what can you find? Where can you get some one-on-ones? When can you take your shot? That better be your sports center top ten. That's phenomenal. I mean, you can't do it better than that. Shielding the defender, going up with one hand. Good for you, DeAndre. What a play. What should have been pass interference, not even necessary to be called. And now they're going to, I guess, make sure that DeAndre Tompkins had a legal catch as they're going to go to replay. We agree with you, DeAndre. That looked like a catch, and a terrific one at that. Ryan Lewis is all over the coverage. I mean, he can't do anything more. He is right on DeAndre, and this is what these coaches call a 50-50 ball. Who's going to go get it? 50-50 shot of the two of you. Pretty similar size between them. And who's got the ability to bring it in? I love no call. Both of them are hand fighting. Let them get after it. Somewhere Odell Beckham saying, okay, young kid. <laughs> I made one handed catch is pretty popular. Even though that ball may have made contact with the ground, I don't see him ever losing control. I would be pretty surprised if this is overturned more than likely stands. And what a tremendous effort. These are adjustments. You asked me at halftime, what adjustments do you make? Well, you've seen two clearly. Number one, the check with me system to get to the better play for Joe Moorhead. And the number two, the ability to push the ball with big plays down the field. At the further review, the ruin on the field is confirmed. Reception, first down. 
Well, Brock, you called it. This is absolutely a Sports Center Top 10 nominee. One handed catch by DeAndre Tompkins, a red shirt sophomore. Only had four career catches coming into today, but he's made two huge second half grabs. And this one sets up Penn State first and goal at the two, trying to make it a one score game again. Saquon Barkley short of the goal line and all the while your redshirt sophomore quarterbacks 21 and 27 for nearly 250 yards that's all Trace McSorley has done sack fumble another fumble getting hit things are ugly never panicked did Trace McSorley that's impressive for such a young quarterback Barkley again up the middle into the end zone for a Penn State touchdown. And the Nittany Lions have cut the lead down to one score again. Four touchdowns on the day for Saquon Barkley, his third rushing touchdown. Nothing fancy here. This is just that inside zone. And as much as I've been bragging about the hit O line getting to the second level, the captain Brian Gaia right in the middle. Look at him. He's he's taking on Matt Galambos three yards into the end zone. And you give Barkley any room, he tends to finish, even with a stumble. How much does special teams brought continue to impact this game? A touchdown for Penn State off the missed field goal with the short field. Tonight, it'll be an amazing scene at Bristol Motor Speedway. The pilot flying J battle at Bristol at 8 Eastern on ABC. As Reese steps in for Chris with Kirk and Samantha, they'll have the call. Number seven, Tennessee against Virginia Tech, also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. And hopefully they get a game as good as ours. Bob Schusen, Brock Hewitt, Allison Williams. Sold out Heinz Field. Joey Julius set to send it deep. Audrey Henderson brought one back for a touchdown last week, as well as in the bowl game last year to end the season. But great kick coverage here by Penn State. They corral him inside the 15-yard line. Pittsburgh has the football and a one score lead. ESPN College Football brought to you by the Ford F-150. Every other truck is history. And Chick-fil-A, we didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. 107 yards and a touchdown for James Conner. A young man who overcame Hodgkin's lymphoma to the point that he would have chemotherapy treatments in the spring and then wear a surgical mask at spring football practice. And a flag down as Pitt got the early start and jumped. Ball starts. Offense, number 78. Five yard penalty, first down. Well, watching that James Conner feature on game day today with Tom Rinaldi as the voice it was amazing. Going straight from your chemotherapy treatment with a surgical mask on to spring football practice and working as hard as any player on the field. For this moment, you do all that work through May, June, July, and August to be in the heat and humidity and try to finish a game in the fourth quarter. And this with 320 rushing yards as a team is one you want to continue to enforce your will and play to all those run plays earlier. changing play in the first half with a 59 yard punt return that set up a much needed Penn State touchdown. Now he ends up with the fumble recovery Pitt's second giveaway and in the red zone with a chance to tie his Penn State. Yeah but look at the difference. Look at all the Penn State guys hustling and bustling. They've been on the field so long defensively it doesn't matter. Manny Bowen he's not giving up on the play. 
Torrance Brown, he is ripping, he is tearing. Even Naeem Wortman White right there is flying to the football. They don't care that they have been largely run over for three quarters. And it's it, about your ability to finish, get to the football, and repays it off. And it looked like Torrance Brown was the player that ripped it out. But again, we have another official review just to make sure that the ball came out before Connor was down. And it certainly looked that way. Yeah, I think this will be a quick confirmation. I think the guys on the field, albeit even through some technical difficulties, have nailed every one of these calls today. They've been, I think, pretty clear in that one as well. What an amazing, what an amazing turn of emotion. People love momentum, I and mean, you can use that word, I guess, as well. But just to feel this building so divided, plenty of Penn State and you know, white. And to further review, the ruin on the field stands. First down. And you can see the Penn State white dotted throughout Heinz Field today. The student body at Pitt has been electric from the minute they walked in these doors. And you're right here. And credit to James Franklin and Penn State down 28-7 to not wilt. Down a linebacker, down another linebacker, down a D tackle, and they have not backed down. They have fought back. Tough area of the field to call plays. Compressed here, first and 10 at the 11. Quarterback draw. McSorley for a yard. Shakir Soto made the stop for Pitt. And both teams have been tremendous scoring touchdowns. When they paid off their opportunities down here, Penn State a little more with short fields. If Pitt can hold to a field goal here, that would be just about as much of a momentum swing as we've seen today. And this guy can be a difference maker. We've seen him on linebackers, on safeties, on corners. He's a weapon in the red zone for Siki. McSorley on the slant right intended for Deshaun Hamilton who went inside and it seemed like McSorley thought he would break outside third and nine at the 10. Yeah, that was the same route they ran for a touchdown last week. Quick play action and inside slant. That ball batted away. McSorley couldn't throw it on the line he wanted, and what a huge third down. Play of the game to this point. And it looks like that risk of Connor being worked on on the pit sideline. Pat Narduzzi wants a timeout on the defensive side of the ball and gets it before the snap. So we'll step aside as well. Quite possibly the play of the game when we come back. All James Conner can do is hope that his defense pulls one out. His fumble sets up Penn State in the red zone, but the Pitt defense has forced third down and nine from the 10 yard line in a one score game. Pitt brings a blitz. McSorley under pressure and goes down. Quentin Werginis looked like the last guy to come up the middle, and he was untouched. His first sack ever. Yeah, his buddy helped him out, creating that lane, and Werginis actually the player that defensive coordinator Conklin pointed to is one of his hardest hitters. A guy that when he strikes you, you go down. And a third down pressure right in the playbook of Pitt. And we saw Blewett miss it on the other side. A kid that's never missed one in his career gets an opportunity in Davis. From 38. Got it. So Tyler Davis stays perfect 11 for 11 for his career three for three this season and it's a four point lead 12 04 to go in the fourth quarter. What a game here in Pittsburgh. Should be another good one tonight in Fort Worth on ESPN Arkansas and number 15 TCU. A game of contrasting styles with the Razorbacks ground game against the Horned Frogs. Hurry up. College football primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton at 7 Eastern tonight. 
on ESPN. No test, Todd Blackledge will have the call. Also on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN as well. Squadri Henderson, very dangerous return man, still pit with a four point lead. Back at the goal line. And Joey Julius can't put this one in the end zone. Returnable. Henderson's got a lane. He's got a step. He returned one to end last season the bowl game for a touchdown. He returned one on opening day against Villanova for a touchdown. And he brings it down to the 11 yard line here. I think someone earlier in the game said it's amazing how special teams play such a critical role and especially in the month of September a brilliant play by play <laughs> guy by the name of Bob was <laughs> And it does and especially when you've got a difference maker like Henderson that can make one guy miss bounce to the outside and the attention to detail James Franklin knew it. He felt like Julius kicking it into the end zone would be one of the big factors in the game. He can't get it to the end zone and Henderson makes him pay. Counter handoff this time trying to turn the corner and that time it is red as George Aston had nowhere to go the Penn State defense stay at home Marcus Allen made the stop and Brock huge huge scenario here for this Penn State defense if you bow up and just hold to a field goal the damage is not that significant Nope. still just a one score game with a lot of time on the clock. That was a tremendous play by Garrett Sickles. As bad as those edge players were in the first half with their eyes and containment, they have been different players in the second half. Don't repeat mistakes. Now it's Connor. Gain of a yard. And is it Pat Narduzzi and the offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, basically playing for a field goal with a kicker? And Chris Blewett, that is 0 for 3 to start off the season. That cannot be your mentality. And that was not a conservative first down play call. That was the same kind of misdirection that you utilized so successfully in the first half. This feels like a play action. And if I'm the offensive coordinator, I sure like my quarterback on the move in these scenarios. Shovel pass. At the five. It's James Conner. Walks into the end zone with a touchdown. What a call. And Pitt extends their lead. Third down and goal from the 12 yard line. Becomes a touchdown for Pitt. What a blow to Penn State. And it's an 11 point lead as we check in with Adnan. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Central Michigan looking for its first win over a ranked team since 91, taking on Oklahoma State. And that's Cooper Rush to Devin Spaulding here. 24 20. Central Michigan has the lead, Bob. Wow, whoever would have thought that if one team won and one team lost heading up towards that meeting next week, it would be Pitt with a win and Oklahoma State with a loss if they can't beat Central Michigan. But that's the matchup next week as Pitt will go to Stillwater to take on the Pokes. What an incredible turn. I know I've said that about five different times, but that's been the nature of this game. Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And both coaches learn an incredible amount about the resolve of both of their teams and yet how the finest details and special teams in these big games and moments can come back to bite you. Well if you're Trace McSorley or any member of that Penn State offense how much is too much in terms of dealing with these momentum changes and having a chance to come back. You have an eternity. Look at the amount of time you have. And the ease with which you have scored here in the second half and ending the first half. Should be no panic. Nick Scott from the goal line. 
Pretty good return out to about the 28 yard line. We talked about some of the moving pieces with Penn State defensively. Naeem Warman White is playing middle linebacker here. This is a shovel pass. Get the quarterback on the move and watch Warman White try to diagnose from the middle linebacker spot. He loses his eyes, he goes to the sprint out pass, and that's all it takes. And these big fellas have shown all day. They've been the difference makers. The yards and touchdowns go to the running backs, but it's been Bookser and O'Neill and Officer and Johnson and Biznovati, those big boys with some real creative play calls to me that have been the difference. So now the pressure back on Trace McSorley as you are running out of room for error. There is a lot of time on the clock and Penn State has their timeouts but down by two scores again. Counter to Saquon Barkley. And weaves his way for about two yards. Shakir Soto stayed home and eventually brought down Saquon Barkley who when he was a five foot eight 160 pound high school freshman almost gave up football. Now he benches 390 and squats 495 and he's 5'11 223 I guess probably pretty good decision. Don't short him 495 seven reps. That's a 600 plus pound squat. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Second down and eight. Dropped. DeAndre Tompkins went to look to turn up field before he had secured the football. Now it's third down and eight. And that drop is the difference. When Penn State has moved the ball, they have stayed on schedule against this defense. Now a predicament. Now you know what's coming from Pitt. That pressure is coming to make McSorley think and react quicker than he wants to. Only a four man rush. McSorley brought down. The four man rush got there. And it's Shakir Soto with the sack. And Penn State will have to give up the football down 11. And Bob, it's a four man rush, but it's a different picture. It's linebackers up in that gap. It's do I squeeze it from my lineman? Where is my protection going to be? And once again, it's Price. It's Price right in his sight lines initially, beating the left left tackle man that helps his buddy Soto finish. When you see that look, linebackers bluffing blitz, dropping back into coverage, that's an NFL picture, isn't it? Tough sure for a is. quarterback at this level. And it's what comes in third and extra long situations against Pitt. Avante Maddox will let this one bounce behind him and give up a lot of yards. Well, if there was one way for that to work out for Penn State, it would be a monster change of field position with 8.42 to go, and they got it with a 69-yard punt and a mistake by Avante Maddox. But what a day it's been for that young man, James Conner. has got a touchdown on the ground and a touchdown through the air. Let's take a look at this blimp-worthy play brought to you by Goodyear. And he's had a bunch of them today. And he would love nothing more than a few more of these opportunities in the final eight minutes. Chance for Pitt to get upwards of 400 rushing yards today on Penn State. And Connor said he was embarrassed to Allison yesterday. I was just embarrassed at the film. That, that's not me. A week ago with 53 yards, stuttering my feet. I'm a downhill guy and I'm a difference maker, and that's what he's been today. Well, they give it to him here. And he is up to 40 James career Connor touchdowns, down. second only to Donnie Dorsett in Pitt history at 63. But again, James Conner is just beginning his redshirt junior year. So he's well on his way, at least on pace, to breaking that record. And this is what you want to maximize right now. You're thinking two first downs and maximizing every part of that play clock. Two, three, four, six minutes of this clock. But you've got to get this first down in the shadows of your own go post. Penn State has to be desperate for a three and out here to preserve time and get field position back on their side. They're going to sell out to try and stop the run and do a pretty good job of it. A gain of only a yard sets up third down and long as Marcus Allen on the tackle. Let's check in with Allison. Bob, we've seen the momentum change in this game, but one thing that has stayed consistent on the Pittsburgh sideline is their energy. So often when a team has a turnover late in a close game, you see them get deflated, get quiet. 
that was not the case after James Conner turned over the ball. Guys just got louder down here. Everybody was waving their towels appropriately at Heinz Field, standing on the benches, <laughs> making sure the crowd stayed involved. No matter what's been going on on the field, they have been loud, they have been active, and they've been engaged on the sideline. And what does that tell you? It's a veteran team that has created some of that sense of belief that Narduzzi talked about. Third down and long here, a rollout for Peterman. Being chased, tucks it under, gets to the sideline, but nowhere near the first down, and that stops the clock with 7.06 to go as Garrett Sickles ran him out. So at least for the moment, it stops the clock and preserves some seconds for Penn State. Exactly what they needed, taking advantage of the 69-yard punt with a three and out. And that's a true freshman in Gilligan and a nice play. We've seen the effort of those edge players. Sickles really pick up in this second half. They've been difference makers. But a 69-yard punt by the true freshman from Penn State really set up the entirety of that drive and possession. Is a line drive returnable for John Reed. He's going to head east west. Does not get a block and he goes down. Bam Bradley makes the stop on special teams. What a big play by the backup linebacker. Adnan Burke back with the studio update. Central Michigan and Oklahoma State. James Washington will take the shovel pass and get in there. Central Michigan seeking an upset. The Cowboys up by three, under five to go. Bob? We're in crunch time too, Adnan, with six and a half minutes to go. Penn State with good field position at their own 40-yard line. Bob Washusen, Brock Hewitt, Allison Williams. And this is probably the last gasp for the Nittany Lions. You have to think that this drive must end in points of some sort. Saquon Barkley gets to the edge, runs a man over, and he's close to a first down. And it looks Barkley. like they will give him the first down as Jordan Whitehead got trucked by Saquon Barkley. Tell me how many times you've said that or have seen that. Not very many. Jordan Whitehead, one of the best, over 100 tackles last year. One of the best freshmen at that position in America last year, and he's usually the one delivering the blow. That speaks to the power of Barkley. Here comes the blitz. McSorley finds a man wide open, Jawan Johnson. His first career catch down to the 21 yard line. And that was a guess. That was Avante Maddox guessing. I don't think that's a savvy move by McSorley. You know, maybe maybe a vet's going to pump fake to the flat and then come back to the curl. But that is a veteran in Maddox guessing he's going to throw to the flat. And McSorley makes him pay. Play action. Deshaun Hamilton had to reach back for an Aaron throw and couldn't haul it in. Back to Jawan Johnson, though, for a moment. He's only on the field because Chris Godwin limped off. So Godwin right now on the sideline again nursing that leg injury and it looks like they're going to have Godwin now he has worked his way back in so he replaces Jawan Johnson. And that first down miss just look what it does that first down miss where the throw is open you make a beautiful play on the previous play but it's the attention to detail on every single snap against good quality defenses. Long throw to Hamilton, weighs out, inside the five. First and goal, Penn State. Saquon Barkley, down to the two yard line. Shakir Soto, got him around the ankles. Second down and goal in Penn State. Still needs to operate with a sense of urgency here, down by two scores. Barkley again. He'll try it again. And this time he's in. That's a Penn State touchdown. And once again, the Nittany Lions have made it a one-score game. Obviously, they will go for two as they will try and cut what once was an 11 point lead down to three. Once again, it's nothing fancy. Once again, you know exactly what you're getting. Back to back inside zone. You trust your interior three. 
to have a little bit of push and all you've got to do with the lead backs is let them get started. Just don't make them shuffle their feet in the back in the backfield at all and it, whether it's Connor whether it's Barkley whether it's Nick Chubb a week ago let them utilize their just elite power and quickness and they're going to push the pile. The difference between needing a touchdown or needing a field goal if you get the football back if you're Penn State rests on this play. Back of the end zone. Deshaun Hamilton has it after a great ball fake by Trace McSorley. The two point conversion is good. And Penn State has the lead down to only a field goal. Well, we're watching McSorley get more and more comfortable with the fake the Statue of Liberty. The first read's not there. The second read is not there. And there is simply no pain, much like this afternoon. And McSorley, he finishes on the other end. That, that's been the story, Bob. This game's 28 to 7. A redshirt sophomore in this environment for the first time against a bunch of seniors on defense that are both going to throw you scheme and blitz your way. And do you have enough just courage to dig in and to persevere? And McSorley surely has. And having a Saquon Barkley helps just a little bit with five touchdowns. Make it six. <laughs> because scores one more, he would tie the school record set by Harry Robb against Gettysburg in 1917. That was a good one. Yeah, that was a good Wow. That was a good game. <laughs> Let's take a look at the work that Saquon Barkley, only a sophomore, has done today. And they, for should, Penn State. All, and they should all look similar. Watch all of them. Well, that one's a little bit different because it was the wheel route on the rub pass pattern. But the other four, every single time he's able to hit the ground running. And when he does that, there's just simply too much oomph, too much power for Penn State or for Pitt on the other end to stop him. Now the job of Joey Julius to try and keep it away from Quadri Henderson. And he will. Well, if you're Pitt, you probably can't be, I guess, the team with more of your M.O. dialed up for this situation. <laughs> you run your four-minute offense with your run game, and you have a chance to end this thing Boy, the, the Penn State defense, though, they've been a different group in the second half. And there's been more commitment. You've seen their edge players play much better. You've seen their safeties get involved. You've seen those linebackers really come to life. And if you would have told me we had 42, 39 at the end of the game, I would have never believed it. Not with the way both of these teams performed a week ago offensively, but, man, are they laying it on the line this afternoon. dodging tacklers and the quarterback picks up about four yards Torrance Brown made the stop I remember talking about this matchup with you earlier this week when you had seen both teams play and you basically said this will be a slugfest in a phone booth yes and now you've got a totally different type of game than we anticipated what if, now a timeout has been called and, and yet by most of the yardage is if you look at today outside a pit with the fly sweep that was really built on those yards inside it has been it's been that phone booth that Saquon Barkley has done so much damage between the guards been James Conner and crew and all of the stable of running backs between the tackles that have done their damage to set everything else up for Penn State in the passing game and for Pitt with some of their fly sweep action that timeout took me a little off guard I have to admit would you normally just under five minutes to go in the fourth quarter expect that James Franklin would start to use his timeouts here. This no. seems awfully early. I would agree. The only thing I would say is his defense has been gassed. His defense has been on the field an awful lot. And if he feels like, man, if I get a three and out right here, right, if I can conserve some of the energy of these guys and get off the field with all the energy my offense has, I've got Pitt reeling defensively. So he's really playing to a three and out here using the timeouts with five to go. Well, that's tough because Pitt picked up four and a half close to five yards on first down. So this is second down and a short six after the timeout. They'll run it with Connor. Only a yard. And once again James Franklin will call timeout. Before third down and four. Well, Monday Night Football is back, and it begins this Monday. The annual doubleheader to cap off week one at 6.55.
Big Ben, Antonio Brown, and the Steelers take on Josh Norman and the Redskins. And then at 10-15, our West Coast matchup, the L.A. Rams will visit San Francisco as Todd Gurley heads up to the Bay. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 5 on ESPN, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Well, this will be a very interesting call for Matt Cannon, the first-year offensive coordinator here at Pitt, and Nathan Peterman, his fifth-year senior. I said to you earlier, the game managers are looked at in the negative many times until you've got to manage a big moment. And that's what this is. And, and this is where the whole playbook should be open. It's third and four. It's a wonderful chance to run a little play pass. You've got fullbacks. You've got tight ends. You've used the shuttle, you know, the shovel pass very well today. Everything should be open to Nathan Peterman right here. And yet the offense for Pitt today has averaged close to seven yards per carry as they've got 344 rushing yards. What do they do on third down? And can Penn State get a stop and get the football back? They'll throw. Peterman swings one to Connor, and he is met and dropped. Malik Golden comes up and gets the third down stop. That's big time. We talked about their safeties having to be more active in this second half. And they've done just that. Malik Golden is spying. He's seeing the whole thing happen in front of him. And a pass that Peterman would like to put on the belly of Connor to at least give him an opportunity to have his eyes downfield and not have to think about the catch is high. And it allows Golden to finish. Winslow's punt. Fielded by Reed at the 24. Breaks a tackle. Gets a block. John Reed to the sideline. Out of bounds at the 30. Good field position. Long way to run on only a six yard return. And Brock, how many different swings of emotion and momentum have we had? Going back to Pitt leading 28 to 7 in the second quarter. And it's been Penn State's balance as well offensively. Something we've not talked about, but they've run it, they've thrown it. They put the ball, as I always tell you, especially early in the season, I never want to leave a venue without my best player having an amazing impact. And that's exactly what Barkley has had. And McSorley's been everything. After two fumbles in the first quarter, you see young starters going to a shell. And he did not. He has really grown as this game has moved along. A touchdown to tie. And plenty of time. And Saquon Barkley crab crawling his way for a first down. Pitt looks like the gas defense. Pitt right now looks like the team that's been on the field as much as Penn State's defense has this afternoon. And they've got to create a negative play. When they have found a way to have success and get off the field, they have created a negative play. And when Penn State stayed on schedule, they moved it to will. Barkley replaced by Andre Robinson. And Robinson for about four yards. Not sure if that was a contact lens problem for Barkley. Maybe a poke in the eye as he is heading back out. It looks like that was a quick pit stop. He won't be on the sideline for long. Second down and six. This is a this is a pivotal play because if you create a negative for Pittsburgh then you bring all that blitz package has been successful for you into a third down opportunity. Play action for McSorley. He wants the home run for Deshaun Hamilton and he drops it. Can't design it any better. That's a double move. That's a double move the entire way. The ball's going there. And Trace knows it. But I like the reaction. He doesn't get down. He doesn't pout. But Joe Moorhead called a double move at just the right time, and Deshaun couldn't finish. It wasn't a negative play, but do you see a blitz coming here? I sure do. If that's in your nature and you've had success, why not? I'm not letting a freshman that right now is rolling red hot sit and pick me apart in the pocket. Saquon Barkley back in to the right of McSorley. Five-man rush. McSorley rolls right into the sack and lost the football, but it's recovered by Penn State. Now what do you do? You probably have to go for it. Rory Blair gets the sack. Only one timeout left. Down to 2.35 to go. And once again, it is that same look. Those two linebackers up in the gap. 
create a little hesitation in Blair, Blair wins outside. Coming up on two minutes to go. Penn State having used two of their timeouts already. Compelled to go for it on fourth and 16. And now Pat Narduzzi will call a timeout on the defensive side. It's not always the numbers you bring, Bob. It is the picture that you present to try to cloud the mindset of an offensive line, of a quarterback, and up in those gaps early were those two linebackers. They bail, and unfortunately, well, we've seen on a few different occasions for Penn State, they just can't hold the edge against Price, against Blair, against some of the better pass rushers in the ACC. There's not much in the offensive playbook for fourth and 16. Is this just a three man rush if you're pit and play coverage. Don't give me that for me. No way Jose. Uh -uh. I'm not ever letting a quarterback sit there especially one as athletic as McSorley to extend plays. No. I'm rushing four and I'm asking those two ends to squeeze and suffocate that pocket. And if I'm McSorley I'm looking to Joe Moorhead and I am infused with so much confidence because he has called a tremendous game today. Has given me and my receivers multiple opportunities on double moves, on corners, on rub routes, and everything in that playbook for Joe Moorhead. This is a different Penn State offense than the one we saw three times last year. Against a pit defense that's veteran to throw seven seniors you know, your way that presents some real issues schematically, fundamentally. And a play caller defensively in Pat Narduzzi and obviously teaming with Josh Calico and the defensive coordinator. They show you a lot of different looks and they are aggressive. They come after the quarterback. Let's see what they do on fourth and 16. They rush four. McSorley looking for the home run ball. It's to DeAndre Tompkins, who was wide open on fourth and 16. Unbelievable. And what a tremendous route combination. Everything that I just said to you about what Joe Moorhead is going to present and what he is able to do schematically, what a tremendous call and even better execution. Barkley. Stood up about a yard shy of what is the comfort zone for Tyler Davis to kick potentially a game tying field goal. So he's warming up on the sideline. Now, having said that, if you're Penn State, you have all the time in the world with the timeout. And if you stay aggressive offensively and score a touchdown, you're on the bus with a win heading back you, to State College. You cannot go backwards. It's a jump ball. Intercepted by Ryan Lewis. This will be a learning lesson for a redshirt sophomore making his second start. For the first time, he really forced the issue at a time he didn't need to. And Ryan Lewis baited him. The fifth year senior himself baited him. Looked like he was taking the sicky on the seam route and all the while was hoping, was hoping the young quarterback would give him a shot. And Ryan Lewis delivers in the end zone. Jubilation on the pit sideline. And your heart breaks for Trace McSorley to make that kind of a mistake when he was amazing in the second half. A big part of this Penn State comeback at one point down 28 7. I think it's going to be fair to say on his grade sheet, Trace is tomorrow. He's going to have a first half with some critical errors. 
a couple fumbles that went the wrong way. And then the second half, it was nothing but plus play after plus play after plus play. Down 28 to 7 to have the guts to come all the way back, to put Deshaun Hamilton. He threw him a beautiful ball, and you can see the emotion. Deshaun knows it. Should have never been in that situation on the double move if he catches it and runs and scores a touchdown. That speaks volumes right there about the upside and opportunity of this offense, unlike anything you've seen the last couple years. Out of desperation, Penn State spends their last time out, but nothing can stop victory formation for Pitt at this point. Nathan Peterman takes a knee, and now all he has to see is that clock tick down inside of 40 seconds. Once it does, Pitt takes one more knee, and that will do it. We talked throughout about the patience, the patience of Penn State, and would they have it offensively, and they did until unfortunately well they missed at the end and Deshaun he's in tears on the sidelines and he feels terrible for his teammates but he shouldn't because these Nittany Lions I'm telling you showed a sense of guts that I didn't think they had at 28 to 7 in this building today partner if they eventually renew this contract past the next four years can we sign up and call Pitt Penn State every year? I'm in. How good of a football game was that? And what a win it is for the Pitt Panthers as they survive against Penn State. And what a scene. The largest crowd ever at a sporting event in the city of Pittsburgh saw a classic. And let's head down to Allison. James, this is a game with so much history. You could feel the emotion out there today. How would you describe this victory? Man, this is a this is a day uh, all of us, all my brothers and, and coaches will never forget it. You know, this first time they brought the rivalry back and for us to get a good win at our home, man, this means the world to us. You told me after last week's performance you were embarrassed. How do you feel today? Man, I, of course, every game I'm going to have something to work on, you know what I'm saying? But hats off to our defense, you know, had some mistakes. Uh, defense had our, had, our, had our back, and, and, you know, we came up with the victory. We're so happy. What was going through your mind when the ball was in the air and you saw Ryan Lewis was going to come away with the interception? Hey, hey man, I just, you got to believe, you know what I'm saying? You got to play to the clock hit zero. And that's what our defense did, and, and you know, hats off to Ryan. That's my guy. James, thank you thank so you. much. You've got to believe probably sums up the life of James Conner. What a win for Pitt. Up next, college football scoreboard. So long from Pittsburgh. Let's go back to Adnan.